Good morning again, everybody. It is now 9.15 and I do call this budget workshop meeting to order. We're starting at the very beginning of this because we had some technical difficulties recording. So this may be deja vu for a few minutes. Um, at this time, I do call this meeting to order. Uh, those present are Commissioner Hanks, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell, Commissioner Emmerich. Commissioner Carasone, can you hear us? Sure again. Thank you very much. She's joining us remotely. Um, we have our acting city manager, Mr. Yarborough. We have our city attorney, our recording secretaries, Ms. Ida and Ms. Becky, and our city clerk is joining us remotely. Ms. Heather, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. At this time, Commissioner Hanks, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Since this is a workshop, there's no need to approve any agenda, so we'll move right on to public comment. Mr. Scott, I, I have a feeling your public comment is written down, so please join us again, state your name for the record, and re-give your public comment, so that way then everybody is accessible to hear it. He reads yeah. it very well. Also. Thank you. And thank you for your patience on this, Mr. Scott. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, good morning, commissioners, charter officers, and public safety. My name is Jeffrey Scott. I'm a homeowner, nine-year resident. Uh, I reside on Twinkle Avenue. Government accountability simply held. Government should only spend taxpayer dollars in accordance with government appropriations. Here at the local level, city expenditures cover city employees, salaries and benefits, city services, and other outlays related to the city's daily operations. Presently, I have identified three issues that occur year after year regarding this city's budget. They are as follows. Too many spending, too much spending, excuse me, too much spending plus too much taxing equals too much local government. Many taxpayers are currently subsidizing city services like myself that do not benefit from them. For this reason alone, our city commission has a responsibility to adhere to sound financial principles when they're setting the millage rate. In my opinion, targeting taxpayers for a heavier tax burden does nothing more than further impoverish those they serve. When will our commissioners minimize outside influence that leads to special interest bias? This sense of entitlement throughout City Hall must be brought to heel. Why? Because the present tax and spend bureaucracy will someday not bring in enough new taxes. And this predicament will create very little in additional revenue to offset the runaway spending we as a city have been accustomed to for over the last three years. Simply put, when arbitrary spending is the new normal, a city's desire to gain any legitimacy with the taxpayers is as desperate as it is ordinary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Yep. Do appreciate that. All righty, so now we are to the point where we are caught up to what? Oh, we point? have one I, I more. We are caught up to the point where we had to stop due to the technical difficulties. That was the only public comment that we had heard. Now, I do understand that there are some online public comment. Ms. Becky, do you yes, want to read them now, please? Sure. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This one is from Mark Smith. After listening to yesterday's meeting, I was very disappointed with the mayor's request for the rollback rate. This is very short-sighted and will just cause a large tax increase need in, in the near future. We as residents need you all to look beyond what will just work in one year so that you can get reelected. Start being the leaders you were elected to be. And the second one is from Greg Cooley. Let's review how the city of Northport's ad valorem taxes are calculated and assessed. Ad valorem taxes are calculated with two components. Number one, the Northport millage rate set by the commission multiplied by number two, the Sarasota County property appraiser's value per thousand minus any homestead or other credits. So if either or both of these components increase with, without an offsetting decrease, then my ad valorem taxes are going to increase. It's simple math. 
yet you politicians have been claiming you are not raising our ad valorem taxes. Assuming you hold the millage rate at the same rate as last year, you can correctly state you are not raising the millage rate. But to say the ad valorem taxes I will have to pay the city of Northport are not increasing is false. It's a downright lie. So don't try to spin or use word playing stating we are not raising our, your taxes, nor shift any blame or accountability over to Sarasota County. Just to demonstrate some comparative context, I cannot go to my boss and tell him I need an additional 10% wage increase. I think I need this for my budget. Also, I cannot go to the stock market and tell them I want in investment declines refunded because I didn't budget for losses. Instead, I'm currently working with a 6% wage decrease until further notice and a 12% retirement nest egg decline. Yet, as it stands now, by this, the city manager budget being proposed, my 2020 Northport ad valorem taxes are going up by at least 10% following last year's 23% increase. So why are you giving yourself and the city a raise beyond what is absolutely required to maintain status quo when our citizens are operating with real life declines during this COVID-19 times? In my opinion, the city's revenue and budget plan should be exact mirror image of the majority of its citizens, not excessive of. Last, so that I am crystal clear on this point, I am advocating for the city commission to reduce the millage rate so mine and most of the city's taxpayers' net ad valorem taxes do not increase 3 to 4%, period. In closing, I have a very simple request that I am betting not one of you five commissioners will respond to and give us citizens a direct, truthful answer. I am betting you will choose to ignore this request this question, and by ignoring, I can only presume it means you five commissioners are choosing to continue to allow the city to not live within its means like us citizens have to do, and you choose to think the city is more important than us private citizens and more deserving of our hard earned money. My question to you, Commissioner, is this. Why does this city, year after year, keep imposing larger tax increases mm -hmm. upon us taxpayers then us taxpayers gain an annual household income increase. Rather, why are your budgets and the city tax increase not tied to the consumer price index or inflation rate like our income taxes increase are? Will you answer that question? That's all. Thank you very much. All right, at this time, before I turn it over to city um, manager, I'd like to double check to make sure any commissioners don't have any follow-up questions or comments based on yesterday's um, discussion. Uh, I do. Go Mayor. ahead, please, Vice Mayor. Uh, in regards to the conversation with Sarasota County EDC, mm -hmm. uh, I, as I stated, as the rep, I would reach out to them. I did immediately uh, before I left the office. You should have a copy of their response, but it says, Jill, I'm not sure why you have not yet received this, meaning the quarterly report. Typical <laughs> procedure is that we send this to the county and they share with the municipalities. We will put this in a more formal email tomorrow, but wanted to address this with you ASAP. He sent it last night. It is our utmost intention to serve all the county, including the city of Northport, in the best way possible. I apologize that our communications have not been up to par, and we will make sure to address this and ensure that each commissioner is well aware of our efforts to serve the community. I can assure you that our partnership with Mel and the team there is as strong as ever. Certainly, there have been some curveballs in the last number of months, but we continue to work with staff to make sure we are supporting Northport businesses and providing opportunities for economic prosperity. So I wanted that read into the record, and they have been. They are working uh, with our EDC department. Um, we're trying to bring some really good business to the city. Thank you for that update, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything? All right. Um, I tasked myself last night to find some money to be able to go to the rollback rate, to reduce the budget, to reduce some excess spending. And it was more challenging than I thought. 
until I found something. I'd like to direct everybody to the front page of their budget workshop book. And uh, either one. It says that the salary costs for existing level of service would increase three and a half percent. So I take that to mean that the salaries of existing employees would only go up three and a half percent. I don't know if anybody can dispute that um, representation of that statement. When I go to commission salaries, it went up 13 percent. And I know ours is tied to the population, but I guarantee you our salaries last year went up $1,000 each. So I decided to go in a little bit deeper. Hopping over to the city clerk's page, not even touching the executive salaries because that went up 16%. Don't know why we didn't give our city clerk a 16% increase and I know we won't be doing that next year. But if you go to regular salaries and you take the $323,000 and multiply that by 3.5%, it brings you up to $173,000, give or take I'm rounding numbers. Not the requested, I'm sorry, that was for the executive salaries. The um, regular salaries went up 7%, not 3.5. So let's go over to a department that does not have executive salaries as far as charter officers. No changes in the personnel. And that is, the first one I came to was finance. Their executive salaries is $128,730. Multiply that by 3.5% and you arrive at $133,235. Not $135,680. That actually went up 5%, not the 3.5. The regular salaries went up 6%. So I kind of delved through the rest of it, got completely miffed by the fact that the salaries did not go up 3.5%. And I'm just looking at salaries. I'm not looking at the bottom line of FICA benefits or anything like that. I'm looking strictly at the salary line. And I need to understand how come it didn't go up 3.5% as stated at the beginning but anywhere from 5% to 13% and on up because I actually stopped looking at the police department. When I got to the police department, I just stopped because it, it is so much higher than that 3%, 3.5% as stated at the beginning of the budget. And, and that 3% is an assumption and it is an overall, here's what we're gonna say the average is. So the particular one in finance, that's me, it's no secret. Um, I currently make, it, it's catching up to the first year I was in the budget. It was only for a partial year. So based on the timing of when my anniversary is, to get to where I will be when my anniversary occurs during 2021, that's why it increases to where it does. HR does those calculations independent of finance and says, here's our anniversary dates. Here's our estimate for what the overall average, because we have no idea what the merit increase will be or if that person will get a merit increase. But we have to budget for it based on the timing of when it happens. Mine occurs earlier in the year, so you're going to need more in that year to pay for that for the entire year. Mine occurs in February. So that is why you're going to see differences. But when it says... The existing level of service would increase three and a half percent, and you're saying that's an average. That is a here's our assumption in the beginning. This is what we're going to factor in. But it's but more we, than three and a half percent when you look at the numbers. When you actually look at the numbers, it's far more than three and a half percent. The ones that I looked at don't even come close to a three and a half percent. There's they're at five, six, seven, thirteen. 
The commission salary, 13% increase. We know our salary is not going up that high. Why was it budgeted that high? Why was, why was other departments budgeted at 13% instead of three and a half? And there are things in there, promotions that have to be factored in. There are a lot of other factors. It's not just the only increase you're going to see in there is going to be the regular merit, which is, again, how much you need for that merit is going to be determined by what year, what point in the fiscal year that occurs. So you're saying the commissioners are getting a, a, a promotion to no, warrant I'm a 13% saying, uh, increase? The unions have designated times where someone may be promoted. Those type of, we need salary dollars to pay for that also. But we can't tell you what that percentage is going to be in the beginning of the year. So the it, statement salary costs of existing level, existing level of service of 3.5% is completely false. But if we have an existing level of service, and I'm sorry if you could tell me a rank to use that we know during that fiscal year is going to move up to a higher ranking officer in either police or fire, we have to factor that in. So the cost of to continuing that existing level of service is going to go up. And Madam Mayor, the 3.5% the is just the mayor. <coughs> Doesn't include the one and a half percent cola. That does not in, does not include the one and a half percent cola. So doesn't. so this budget is based off of a a five percent, uh, not a not. So it, it doesn't say that. I'm going by what it says. Well, I can't and help that. I, it and say I that. get but, it. But but we don't we don't put hold on for a second. We don't put the entire summary of everything that's in this budget on this one page. We, we try to give you highlights. We don't put everything in the whole kitchen sink on this one page. It's not possible. So, uh, but we have communicated that the average merit is 3.5%. We have communicated that the coal is 1.5%. No, the com communication. Verbally, verbally, in our, in our, in our, in our budget uh, one on ones. In our assumption workshops also, we did. We talked about that, that. Yeah, exactly. I will say it now, it's extremely fuzzy math, and it makes me question everything else that's in here. When I see a 13% increase in commission salaries, when I know that will never happen. And that, I believe, gets adjusted once they have the final calculation. Correct, and that's in, and that's in um, September, it goes October 1st. And if we use last year's projection, it'll probably go up a thousand dollars, not twenty one thousand. You think the commissioner is going to get twenty one thousand dollar raise? That's what the budget's saying. E individually? No. Collectively. Collectively. Collectively, last year we we basically got a thousand dollar raise. It it was five thousand. Five thousand across the board. This is where I'm coming from. I, I think that it's over inflated and, and I, I am very disheartened to see it. And if one, the first department I go to has that kind of an increase where I know there's no promotions and it's based on population, we would have to have so many people move into the city to warrant a $21,000 Total, all five of us individually, it would be five thousand each to get that kind of a salary increase, and that's not happening. We know that. So then, because that itself is suspect, I have to then suspect everything else in here. So I said my piece. Um, I would really like to find out exactly what some more accurate estimating budgeting numbers are. I know it can't be a hundred percent accurate, but at the same time. This is way overinflated. So, Mayor, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Um, city manager or staff, whoever, these are these are our budget is kind of set by state statute, and we have to presume assumptions. Correct. I'm sorry. Say that again, ma'am. Try doing it this way. Can you hear me better now? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Uh, our budget is by assumptions, correct? It's not, we don't have the ability to actually determine actuals until that final budget time in the end of August, September. Yeah, for example, we haven't even received, typically we receive the you know, revenue estimates from the state uh, in, the, in the revenue handbook. We, we don't even have that yet. It's supposed to come out uh, 20, I think they gave us a range of uh, this month of the 20th through the 24th, I think. Uh, and it has, we haven't received it yet. So we're doing, yes, so, yep. We're doing the best we can with what we got as far as numbers, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So now um, let's talk about this 16% increase that I think it was 16% that was uh, discussed by the mayor. Um, that 16%, 13. how much, 13? 13. Okay, so 13% overall, and that's 13 divided by 5, so that's a 2.6% increase individually. Does some of that have to do with health insurance, health care, uh, FRS increase, or it's specifically salary driven? It was specifically the very first line item, executive salaries. I didn't even go into anything with FRS, FICA, or health insurance. It is strictly the salaries, and that 13% equals $21,000. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. All right. So the um, executive salaries... That includes... You're breaking up, ma'am. I said the executive salaries. Doesn't that include more than just the commission? No. Who else is in our department, ma'am? Hold on. Let me pull up that area uh, because I thought that the um, legislative lobbyist comes That's out totally of it. That's totally separate. And... That's down in contracted services and operating expenditures. Right. Okay, so regardless, I'll have to look at that closer, but um, point being is that we are making a assumption based off of our preliminary numbers. And so help me out, uh, city manager. This then gets finalized when, and it can be reduced. Sure, it can always be reduced. Yes, ma'am. And it get, when is it that we come back for that final approval of the budget, and at that point, the reduction takes place? Uh, you know, you've got your two public hearings in September. Uh, I don't think we don't have any meetings planned in August because y'all usually take that time off. I mean, we really need to know now if we're making that drastic a reduction to be able to do all the calculations get it in the system, get it done, carry it all through. To try to make it in between the first and second public hearing is, is almost impossible. Okay, so very quickly, do you have an estimate, because I see where uh, the mayor is going with this, do you have an estimate of what is going to be placed back into the general fund fund balance due to savings, cost savings? Um, we, the one item that we knew we should look up, we believe will be about $200,000 in savings in travel and training. Um, we don't know the overall number. It will be more than that, but I, we don't have an estimate of the return to fund balance in its entirety at this point. Hmm. We can come up with we a don't have... rough one for you, but I don't have it yeah, right yeah. now. Okay, no, I don't expect anything specific, but I know that there's a lot of things that we did not get accomplished this year when they were supposed to be, and pretty much in every single department, there's going to be money going back, and I think that that would help us when we look at this year's budget so that we can turn around and say, okay, well, there's 200000 that went back from the commission. Uh, you know, so uh, the justification for what we're doing this year um, is that the money went back in a fund balance. Something along that lines, at least we know what we're working with, because I, I understand where the mayor is coming from. It's very frustrating 
I'll wait till you stop shuffling papers, though. <laughs> uh, it's very frustrating because we're really given just a piece of the pie to look at. And then at the end of the month, all of a sudden we have these accurate details that say, hey, you just put a half a million dollars back into the fund balance. And we could have used that to, you know, uh, save the uh, tax burden. So I think that having even just a rough number of how much is going to go back into that uh, fund balance from the general fund will help us dramatically. Thank you, Commissioner Carison. I'd, I'd really like to see if we can get a, a, a consensus to really have staff during this meeting look at these salaries and come up with a more accurate, instead of all over the board, number on these salaries. Because if ours is increased 13%, there was another department that increased 13%. Some of them are seven, some of them are five. There's no rhyme or reason to any of it. This impacts the budget that we're sitting here trying to approve. And I told you guys yesterday I would look for some way to possibly get it back to the rollback. And this just glared at me. And this is just one department that I know for a fact has zero changes in it, except for a small increase due to population growth. Not $21,000 worth of population growth. Go ahead. Are you... Uh... Or are you having them look at salaries or I mean because because if a department's smaller, percentages are higher, uh, you know, than larger departments. So so are you just looking at percentages or are you wanting something specific? Are you wanting them to bring back specific salary increases? Because uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the commission, uh, the commission department can be 14% or whatever. You know, but uh, but it's relatively small department in in a funding compared to say the police or fire. So that's what I'm asking because if we're just looking at percentages, that's not a that's not a true figure as far as things can go. If you're looking at salaries, maybe it's a little better. So that's what I was asking. Is um, it whole department? Just... I was looking at what the city manager's recommended one was for ex for the commission is one hundred and eighty one thousand eight hundred dollars. Currently, it's 160. That went up $21,000, which is equal to a 13% increase. So I'm looking at dollar for dollar. Are we having technical problems? Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm looking at dollars. What are the accurate dollars? Because based on the summary page of 3.5%, that's false. And then a acting city manager said it's three and a half percent plus the one percent cola. So one now we're up one and a half. One and a half percent. Sorry, I thought that's what I said. My brain might be moving quicker. Um, so that brings it up to five percent. But that's not what is stated in the page that that's what I have to rely well, on. Well, that's what I'm asking because, you know, like I received an email that talked about, you know, how much money we actually make and they're attributing, you know, paper, things like that. Which are administrative costs, right. operating you know, expenses. They're, 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 you know, those are not our salaries. I'm not even looking right. at that's operating expenses. That's what I'm expenses. asking. Like, I'm looking, looking at strictly as a at whole. salaries. I'd so like. That's what I was asking. I'd like to get some real, logical numbers that are pretty much standard across the board that we can rely on. Because going back to it, this is fuzzy math and then it makes everything else in this book suspect. May I? Go ahead, Vice Mayor. I view it uh, differently. I read that line of the salary cost for existing level of service would increase 3.5 as meaning the COLA was already existing. So that is not an increase. It would stay the same. To me, it's saying that the average merit increase would be 3.5. Because it, I believe it runs from one or two percent up to four, so the merit increase was going to be three point five. Is what 
the assumption was. On top of that 3.5 assumption for merit increase, you have the promotional increases going to a different level or a different position. I mean, we heard yesterday some of the departments, you know, they had two people went from Tech 1 to Tech 2. Now there's openings for Tech 1. Well, that Tech 2 is a higher level. Plus, if their review comes in and their merit increase is up to that 3.5, you are going to have a higher percentage of increase. Um, so there's far more that goes into creating a budget with assumptions for salary than just saying it's an average of 3.5. It's my interpretation is that 3.5 is their merit. It has nothing to do with the full line of salary. It's strictly the merit. Is my thinking correct? That's correct, and that is when we've looked at the past, we've gotten that 3.5 from going, what were the actual expenses? What did it work? What percentage did it work out to be? Because we can't predict who's going to get a 1%, who's going to get a 4%, who's, we don't know that. So we look at the history and say, it's been an average of 3.5, that's what we're going right. to Right, and use. as far as comparing merit raises to what the commission has or gets, that's apples and oranges. Correct. We are based upon population. Uh, the staff is not. Theirs is based upon merit. So this one may at some point increase 13%. It may decrease 13% depending upon the population. So to compare that page of the commission salary, to me, shouldn't even come into play when you're looking at the salary of staff. And just to rebuttal it, I, I fully understand and stated that ours is based on population, but for ours to go up $21,000 would have to have a humongous increase in population in the city. And, and I don't see that population going up that much when last year our increase was $1,000 and we increased our population, I don't know, it was what, 7,000 people or something like that. So um, I, I just would like to see if we can get staff while we're in this meeting to really look at that first line item of salaries, whether they're executive or they're um, regular, and I don't like the phrase regular salaries, but <laughs> regular employees, um, the union employees, and see how accurate those numbers are. Because if, if you're basing an assumption, it's pretty standard across the board. One, maybe 2% difference, half a percent, give or take, up or down. And this is way out of whack. But, but the thing is, that <coughs> those numbers are not a percentage times last year. Those are, okay, um, Angela's, this is just an example, um, anniversary date is in October. That means we've got to factor in enough to pay Angela her new rate for next year for the entire year. So that increases the percentage. And then we have, you know, there is no set percentage in the union contracts. Is You have to read all of the details of those contracts to go in and do the actual estimates for those. So Yvonne and HR does these and it takes her, her what, a month or more. There's so many, it's on the exact details and the when it's gonna occur and what it falls under, what contract it falls under. There is no one percentage we can give for that. But Yvonne actually does all that work to factor it into the numbers. And like I said, for me, comparing for me, because my first year, I started in February, so you saw not a complete year of my salary. Then you're going to see a large increase because now you got to not only factor to pay me for 12 months instead of, I don't remember, nine, and then you also have to factor in that my anniversary is in February. Your full salary was already factored last year for the whole year for a director of that department. But it wasn't. It wasn't. The previous director's salary was in there. Yes. So when you're comparing a, a 20 adopted, there's been changes to that too. That's not going to be a 100% correct amount for what actually happened. I mean, we have one moment in time 
to get these ready and we'll make some adjustments if there's you know major changes to a department before the budget but I mean there's changes going on every oranges. day you, so I mean because I mean, because you, you you've got one finance director who's paid at this level you have a new finance director paid at this level uh, that will increase the percentage and then you've got the the colas and the and the merit raises on top of that so while you yeah it may look like that line item did go up that percentage amount, but it does not mean that that individual is getting a 13% raise or whatever raise. So you can't take one year compared to that next because it, now you have two different people in that position and they earn two different salaries. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Emmerich, and then we'll wrap this up because I got one other thing I want to talk about. Yeah, um, my understanding is this is an accumulation of all the salaries depending on what status they're in for the whole year. For these percentages like let's just say you have an individual that's been here for 20 years and they're capped out all they're eligible for is the cost of living which would be the 1.5 because their pay is frozen at the cap out so that's going to enter into these variables you're talking about okay february to october <coughs> if you're only paying for six months of the the raise that's all that's going to be calculated in there but if it's october to october you're calculating the whole raise which that comes up to the percentage. So still, when you go back to the salaries, it's still only up to a possible 5%, and in some cases, only one and a half, correct? If they're capped out, they're only getting one and a half, but if they're not capped out, they can get up to a five with the three and a half and the cost of living combined. So that's a variable in, in different employees. Merits may go up to 4%, and then the cost of living will be factored in as 1.5. Okay, but you just averaged it out at 3.5 because yes. you got really got to be a superstar to get a 4. So a lot of people are out there expecting maybe a 3, 3.5. Right. Right. Okay, and that's, that's all I'm trying to get at is all these different variables factor into the final calculation and those percentages as a department as a whole. <clears throat> Yes, all these factors end up in that number you're seeing on there. Correct. But so 13% is the whole department. Yes. Yes. Correct. That's all I wanted to get at. Thank you. I have one more thing, if you don't mind. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Uh, this, is, this topic is one of the reasons I brought up that director position that was 144000 you know, close to 150000 Instead of messing with the salary, the way we're talking about right now, if you eliminate that 150,000, um, I think it could actually remove the 150K off of the millage. Uh, we did discuss about <laughs> it going back into the reserves, uh, that second reserve, because we never have touched the actual reserve. I want that stated. It was the sustainability that we uh, took from and that ordinance that we're changing is reading up to so you could put that close to 150,000 back into that sustainability but with the changing of the ordinance you don't have to you could actually lower the millage uh, it won't be rollback but as I stated yesterday rollback hasn't been used in years and years because that new growth costs a lot it does not pay for itself. Uh, so I would like to ask Lisa if she could calculate how much change would come to the millage at $150,000, you know, what it equates, <coughs> and then let me know whenever. We don't have to hold up for that. Just Point some, 0302. You're so fast. Point what? 0302. Thank you, ma'am. And that 143000 would be a part of this budget proposals for planning. So if I were going to say I needed to cut, this is where I'd go to not impact current services. Correct. I mean, this is... Correct. Yeah, we've got our continuation budget and we've got this. Correct. And it doesn't touch the continuation. Right. It touches where right. we were actually right. looking at an increase this year. Right. So thank you. Um, Can I ask a question based off that? Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Carison. Thank you. I'm sorry. What was that? What was that percentage again? 
0 0.0302 is what 150,000 equates to when looking at millage adjustment. Thank you. Okay, and how much is that in real numbers? Like uh, average family, uh, you know. Get you about a tenth of the way to the to the rollback, if I'm not mistaken. For the effect on a $200,000 $200, value home, taxable value, it'd be $6.04. $6, okay, and four cents. All right, for a $200,000 home. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yesterday we talked about tuition reimbursement. And I was looking to cut the ninety-two thousand um, dollars out of the budget. I heard concern about union contracts. I looked at all of the union contracts. Each one of the union contracts is subject to commission approval at budget time for educational expenses um, based on personnel policy and their actual contracts. I have them here if you want to look at it. Um, and I know y'all are going to question it, so I will just read it to you. I do not, I did not see any educational expenses in the PBA contract. In the AFSCME, it says city and union recognize the importance of career ladders in order to provide promotional opportunities and educational training in an effort to provide incentive and assistance towards continuing education. An educational assistance program is available as outlined in city policy. City, city policy says it's based on our discretion and availability of funds. And basically the exact same thing for the IAFF is it's basically word for word the exact same um, in their contract. That's $92,000. Our employees are Based on the conversation so far, subjected to the hundred, I'm sorry, 1.5% uh, COLA uh, increase and also up to the 4% for salary uh, evaluation, you know, increase merit pay. And now another $92,000 for uh, tuition reimbursement. I have always said you have to look at the entire compensation package not just salary, not just the benefits, but the entire thing in totality. And I go back to what is going on in the world around us. And we're giving up to a six, you know, one and a half to five and a half percent increase in salary and also the tuition. So um, I just wanted to let you know that this is subjected to our discretion. The only one that is questionable is PBA because I did not find anything about education in PBA's contract. So go ahead, Commissioner Hanks. Um, you know, I do know that uh, some of these folks probably uh, attain these because <coughs> of the, in the incentives of the promises that we've already made. Um, so I would suggest that uh, if if folks have done that because because we have said that we wanted to incentivize them to do better, to move forward, to progress, uh, to better their lives, to better the city. Um, to then now say, hey, listen, I know you're three classes, you know, I know you're uh, you're uh, uh, you're two thirds of the way through a degree, you know, or a license that you need, uh, but you know what? We're going to cut back that uh, two thousand dollars or three thousand um, uh, dollars, you know, that we promised to reimburse you, even though. You know, during that reimbursement, you're required to work a certain amount of time and things like that. I have a very hard time with that. Um, if if we're looking at the totality, it should have been, and uh, we decided that we weren't going to go with that. That should have been done uh, when we approved it. Uh, you know, when we approved, you know, whether or not folks can, uh, you know, take these these classes and incentivize them to better themselves because it does better the city. So at that time is when we should have said that. And I'm saying again, you know, we have given our word to these folks. We need to keep that word. I understand where you're at. I, I, I mean, I hear you. But uh, the reality is that, uh, I mean, I, I cannot put that burden back on them. I can't just look at them who, who have already spent some money and then say, sorry, you know what? I know you're going to have a better Christmas this, 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 this year or you're, 
or uh, you know, you know, whatever the burden is upon them. But uh, but but then to say, I'm sorry. I know we said that we would reimburse you, but now we're not going to. But these are new requests, Commissioner. These are brand that's new requests. That's what I'm asking this. you: is that in these contracts we've incentivized these folks? Got to turn your mic on. <sighs> it's off again. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I guess I don't hit it hard enough. Uh, but anyway, so uh, you know, I think it's important that we maintain because. We maintain the word that we've given. I get that things have happened, but uh, but 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 again, these are, you know, we should have at the time said this is not part of our process. That's what we should have said. Um, I'm not arguing with some of the other things that you're saying that we should look back into. You know, if you want to look at salaries and see where things are bloated, I'm okay with that. But I have a hard time with this. We have a contract with these folks to incentivize them to better themselves. Better their families. You know, it's not like we're just giving them extra money. They're actually out there, you know, they're bettering themselves. They're bettering the community. You know, they're, you know, they're making our people safer, our community safer by, by doing these things. So I think that's always worth looking at right there. You know, you, we just can't keep going back on our word with them. And, and Mayor. during that point in time, uh, when that was developed, it was to enhance the departments. Uh, we were losing policemen and firemen like crazy. Uh, we have another situation currently right now for first responders. Uh, these things of defunding and we see officers walking away, that pool of who you can draw from is going to shrink again because they are really evaluating, do I want to be on the front line anymore? Whether it's fire or whether it's police. And so we see a lot of people changing career and getting out of those fields. So it was that small pool that we were trying to give a tool of enhancement to our departments so they could get the recruits. I don't think it's time to pull back on that right now currently. I think the situation is too vulnerable. Uh, I think those tools need to be left in that toolbox so that they can get the recruits, the quality of recruit that they need. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody Amen. else? Amen. Um, Madam Mayor, I, I have the police chief and fire chief who might be able to kind of give you an idea of how we went about negotiating our, our current contracts. Anyway. But Todd Garrison, police chief, the career development plan that was approved ties in educational requirements in order for these police officers to earn a higher um, merit raise up to that 4%. So in order for the officer to reach his maximum merit, he has to do X, Y, and Z to achieve that. And part of that is the educational component. In addition to that, that was something that several of you commissioners came to me when I was vetting for this job of presenting that plan and training and education and a more educated police force. And that's what we're trying to do. So we have to invest in our people. And I think that you're going to spend a lot of money not having an educated workforce versus putting the investment up front now. And like the uh, commissioner said, we are competing more so now than we were years ago for quality candidates. And police officers are walking off the beat every single day. Every one of us that puts on this uniform every day is questioning, is this worth it? Yeah. All right. But I can tell you here in Northport, it's worth it because we have the support of the community, of the commission. So. And I fully respect the fact that we invest in our, in our employees. I am not taking that away. I am looking at a budget and trying to accommodate a budget given the circumstance that our country is in and everybody around us not working, having their hours cut, not having jobs, and I'm trying to be cognizant of that at the same time as being cognizant of what is happening in your department specifically because that bothers me to the core. And I, I stated at the beginning, I did not see anything about education in the PBA contract. I didn't see a specific item about P, about education in that PBA contract. 
I appreciate you explaining that it's tied to performance. And I get that. And I appreciate that little bit of education in this short amount of time. So thank you for that. And, and I, I'm starting to feel like I'm the ogre here. And I understand we have amazing staff. I understand that our staff has families. I understand that staff is doing a phenomenal job with everything is around them, including trying to go to school and bettering themselves. But I also understand what is happening outside these four walls. And that is our community that we are to serve. And I'm just trying to get the budget in line a little bit better and make some cuts where we can. And I'm just looking for them. And that's all this discussion was for. I, I respect that. I just want to say that, you know, based on the national dialogue that's going on out there, the national narrative, whether it's defunding or not, there's a huge push out there now that, no, we don't need to defund the police. We need to better train the police. And training dollars are going to yeah. become premium in the future. Thank you. All right. So, um, I, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, if you want to weigh in, go ahead. Please do. I would I'd like to. Uh, Scott Titus for the Fire Rescue District, Fire Chief. Um, I appreciate what Chief Garrison said, and, and a lot of that narrative and a lot of that conversation is the same, I think, from where we were to where we are now. And one of the things that I, that I would add, or a couple of things that I would add to, to what he's already stated is, um, I agree with you, outside of these four walls are the things that we're all concerned about. But our police officers, our firefighters, their families, their spouses are also affected by this. They're going through some of the same pain that, that, that we're all going through. And in addition to that, at this time, they are on the front lines of all this stuff going on. Our personnel are out. I can tell you some of the things that we're dealing with on a morale level right now, I have, I have some members that when they get put on the ambulance, they kind of think they're getting punished because they have a, you know, there's this perception that they have this greater risk of exposure. I think the things that we've put into place actually protect them better, but it's hard to get away from that feeling. So some of these little uh, nuances and things that we make when we change policy, we put that professional development and plan in place, if you all remember, very, very quickly because we were bleeding mm -hmm. people. So to give you an idea right now, we have, uh, and I think this is an exact number, I can go back and check if you want me to confirm it, but I think there's 54 of our members out of 111 from shift commander down, 54 of those members have less than three years of service, which means they're not journeymen or journey, pe journey persons yet. What does that mean? That means that they can't be in charge of an apparatus, they can't ride with another apprentice. We have an agreement with the Department of uh, Education that says we have to, on shift, have a one-to-one -one ratio. We're right on that bubble right now. We can't afford to lose senior people. We can't afford for them to go, you know what, things aren't good here. They're taking things away. We're going to walk away. We're in a more critical time now, probably because of that balance, balance than we've been in a while. So I would implore and encourage you, um, those educational monies are, that's a benefit to us, that success through succession. And again, we talked a little bit yesterday about making short-sighted decisions that have long-term impact impacts. And, and, and Mayor, I understand you're trying to look for stuff, and we'll help you do that. I just, I'm just not sure that this is, this is the spot where that little hanging fruit is. But I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Anybody else, uh, Commissioner Carasona, to wrap it up so we can move on to police? And I appreciate everybody indulging me on this. I'm just really grateful that the chief had talked about how important it is that we support our police officers. Because I think you're going to see it's going to be very difficult to get anyone to work in government in the years to come. Mm -hmm. And so the more that we can do to incentivize people working and uh, in the public service industry, I think it's, it's, it would behoove us to, to continue. This is something that we talked long and hard about. And you have to remember what we walked into in 2016 when we were so understaffed in the fire and the police department. And it's got to be something that we keep. We need one of our first priorities as a commission in 2016 was to bring the morale up of our in the, of our workers, be it uh, general fund employees or union employees. And we did that. And God help us if we go backwards. And I understand what you're trying to do, Mayor, but this is not the way. It's just not, in my opinion. Well, then we got to find another way. 
because the, the perception and the message we're sending is that we're giving our employees a five and a half percent increase. And well, remember, is, perception is not reality. I no, mean, the reality we, is we, we get ninety three thousand dollars a year. So, all right. Anything else, ma'am? No. Okay. Um, city manager, we'll go ahead and move on to police. And again, I appreciate the conversation. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I said I would do my homework. I did, and it's okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm one of five. Yes, um, Kim? Girl? Okay, so moving on, where we were yesterday is, I think we were up to the police department. Let's get back there. Um, all right, and I think we've already had our fun fact. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, that's fact. right. That's right. Um, so here is these slides uh, represent just the police department. I'm sorry, they also include the forfeiture fund, police education fund, and a law enforcement impact fee, in addition to the surtax budget proposals. So for the police department, we're proposing an increase of $1.8 million or 8.86%. And this is the continuation budget is 21 million, 21.3, and there are budget pr proposals of 1.1 million, which are made up of these. Uh, the majority will be replacement of vehicles, um, with the next largest being the special detail for Cool Today Park. And we discussed all of these in June. This is a visual of what we move forward with. These are the changes that we made since the June workshop. There was an increase of 108,000, um, majority of that due to adding back the feasibility study for the police department. Are there any questions on these slides or other questions about the PD budget? Could you flip back to your pie yes. chart, please? Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Uh, the Cool Today special detail that is reimbursed back, correct? Bob Garrison, Chief of Police, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, and the replacement vehicles, which fund does that come from? It comes out of surtax. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Carasone, do you have any questions, ma'am? Nope. Commissioner Hanks or Emmerich? No, ma'am. Um, if you go to the proposal of 1636 on page 92 of the budget book and you compare that to the HTE, I'm sorry, I think I'm, I'm sorry, I got the wrong page. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. Let me start that again. On page 100 in the budget book, proposal 1715. You know what page it is in ours that we were given for this meeting? Uh, this, this is in the budget book. Be a different book. Yeah. Do you know what it, what it, where it's at in here too? It's not in there. Should be. This is all of the CIP. It's not a CIP project. It's a proposal sheet. Any? It's not a CIP project, ma'am. It's it's a, a expense. They want to add the additions and rentals. It's the proposal number seventeen fifteen. And in the HTE, the new July HTE, it's on page 41. If you go to, in the HTE, the 4,400 rentals, it says here proposal 1715, which is page 100 in the budget book, additional vehicles for the SIU for $10,500. The Proposal detail sheet mentions nothing about SIU vehicles. And I'm wondering what's going on. <laughs> no. 
Which line was it in the? Um, on page 41, it's about halfway through. 4,400? 4,400, yes. 4, yeah. And just so you know, Commissioner Carasone, they're looking and, and discussing. Yeah, I think it's going to be tied into that CIP project. I don't know why it's just there. Yeah, doesn't this have to do with the rental of that space, that Benderson space? Yes. yes. But on the HTE, they have a, in that same uh, proposal detail sheet, in the HTE, they have additional vehicles for SIU, and that's what uh, my question is, is why are vehicles for SIU in this rental space for their expansion? That's a good question, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cut the budget here, you know? <laughs> you are doing your due diligence, ma'am. It does come out of 4400 for the rentals of the vehicles. And this was going to be an additional. You need to come around to the mic and state your name for the record, please. <laughs> Thank you. Jennifer Ayers, business manager, police department. Um, I know there is an increase of 10500 requested. Um, they're going to, uh, they needed more money for the types of vehicles because every year the vehicle cost is going up to lease. So they were putting that in there along with, I believe, another vehicle. But I don't know why it's not in here. The only thing I can think of, it's covert, and we tried to keep that out of there, but... It's in the uh, HTE report, so that kind of blew it. Yeah. So I, I will get you the answer is exactly what, why, or I, we can change that. I don't see where you're seeing vehicles in the 17. It's in here. Oh, it's in this one? Yeah. In the HT, it's a line item, and it specifically says it, but there's no vehicles, and thank you, Chief, there is no vehicles listed in 1715 on the proposal sheet. Yeah, because vehicles wouldn't be part of that. Thank you. <laughs> Goes in that account, but it's not related to the moving of the. So are you? So I guess the bigger question is: Are you needing ten thousand five hundred for SIU vehicles, or is that? Yes. Yep. I'm trying. I know. <laughs> I know. All right. So you guys are going to update this. Um, yes. You're going to update this. And maybe it's titled uh, Northport PD Lease Vehicles to keep it. So they definitely need to remove the uh, proposal exactly. 1715. So can I get a consensus to have them change the HTE and line item, place it in the appropriate, I guess, place, and also, you know, just make things match correctly? Well, just be an additional budget Mayor. proposal. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Carison. I need some explanation why we're renting SIU vehicles in the first place, and then later on you see that we're actually budgeting for maintenance of those vehicles. So I'm a little, it's a leased vehicle. Um, Todd Garrison, again, Chief of Police. Ma'am, this, this came before commission in the past, and the, these are our covert vehicles, and um, we have to be able to have the ability to change our vehicles around. Um, ah, now I remember. Now I remember. Okay, you don't have to talk anymore. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, and there's no way to use anything that we've accumulated from property evidence. I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't hear we you. We can Please. barely hear you. Uh, Commissioner, can you? Is there no way that we can use confiscated vehicles from cases? Ma'am, um, with, with all due respect, we try to utilize vehicles that we do confiscate. But however, um, a lot of those vehicles, I wouldn't even trust my worst enemy driving down the road. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
So can we get a consensus to have staff adjust that uh, line item on page 44 in the HTE to accurately reflect what's being done? Because it's not part of the... Yes, and again, I think all they have to do is right. remove the proposal number. It should fit under that category. Fine, just remove the proposal that it's assigned to. Uh, Commissioner Hanks. I'm sorry. Thank you. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. I'm a yes. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Carison. Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, there is, all right. If I had a bullhorn, I would scream this from the tallest mountaintop because this next statement is going to come back and say that I'm wanting to defund the police. So with my biggest megaphone and my biggest bullhorn, this is not what I'm trying to do. I am looking at your vacant positions. You have eight vacant police officer positions. A couple months ago, you had nine vacant police officer positions. Last year at this time, I think there was like 15, something like that. I didn't bring that sheet with me. We are paying for, excuse the word, phantom positions that <clears throat> we're not filling. We have these vacancies, and I know with attrition, one leaves positions vacant, you find somebody to fill that position. Somebody leaves, you have a vacancy, and somebody else fills that position. But there is a constant rotating stock of between seven and nine positions in the police department that are constantly rotating. And it's not fully staffed 100%. There's always these seven to nine vacant positions. Can we? remove three of those positions because it doesn't seem like we are ever filling those positions. All right, so out of, out of all of our open positions right now, I only have two um, police officer positions that I don't have a body for those spots. Everybody else out of all these positions, I just had six start on Monday. I've got uh, three in background right now, and I've got two additional open ones that I don't have a body for that. However, we have stood before this commission and told this commission what amount of police officers we need. We are, I tell you what, my staff has done a phenomenal job hiring and processing all these positions coming through. I think since I've been chief, we're at what, 35 new positions that have gone through, you know, with uh, retention, retirements, and all that other stuff. So we have processed with a very small staff, a lot of people in a short period of time. And I want to add, we're getting very qualified candidates that are coming from other law enforcement agencies. So to sit here and say, I can reduce my police officer allotment, I really should be in front of this commission saying, I need more police officers to perform the, the service that we need to perform for the city because the city's growing. Mm -hmm. Our resources are starting to spread outwards. So to sit here and say, yeah, are we ever gonna be 100%? I don't think any department's ever at 100%. You always have attrition. You know, we have retirements and people quit. So how do you plan for that? But I'm telling you that the amount of police officers that we have right now, I need. And Chief, I'm looking at a sheet that was given to us dated July 1st. Right. I, and I'm I, looking at a sheet that was given to us in May or June yep. with, with those vacant positions. I was looking at a sheet that was given to us last year at budget time. And comparing those three documents that I have, seeing these open slots just keep on going, keep on going, mm -hmm. keep on going, unaware that you hired six people that started on Monday. Right. So this is a moot point, and I appreciate the additional information. I, I can tell you, every time we get to see the finish line, something happens. <laughs> it moves. Uh, you know, 
Listen, we hire people, and even though we're bringing in quality candidates, some people can't pass our training program. So we will cut our losses at the front end as opposed to waiting at the back end to cut our losses. Well, thank you for that. Um, I have one more on page. Oh, can I just add hey, go ahead. four of those positions were for the new West Village's positions that were added. I, I should have stated that earlier. Where's that in this budget book? It was last year, but we had last to wait. Year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> no, we had we had to wait to fill them. Okay. Thank you. Um, page ninety two, the reclass for the volunteer support specialist. Um, it's not funded. I get that. Um, but it's a reclassification, and it, it says that it is a. Um, currently a sergeant doing this role, but you have on your vacant sheet a volunteer services coordinator, which sounds exactly like what is not funded on page 92. Can you explain the differences? So what we are trying to do is combine, I, I was going to ask for a new position in addition to what we had. My staff came to me and said, Chief, why don't we combine that new position that you're, you're looking at with the volunteer coordinator position and reclassify it? Because we feel that one person can do both jobs. Right now, I have Sergeant Miranda doing all the special detail stuff. Sergeant Miranda does all the community <coughs> stuff. Right. Sergeant Miranda does all the homeless outreach stuff. Sergeant Miranda doesn't have any more heads to put a hat on. So we're trying to think internally as opposed to creating a brand new position to reclassify the position that we already have and just expand their responsibilities and accomplish that goal that way. So you, it's not funded right now and that's the city manager's request. So correct. I am asking you, can you find $6,000 in this budget to make that happen? Because you already have the volunteer services coordinator. Can you find $6,000 in here, cut something else to make that happen? Is it that important or are you okay with the status quo that you have today? Yeah, we, our budget is, is lean. Um, I, I wish you can see the budget that we initially had. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff cut out of this budget. It, it is very lean. Um, we can always go back and, and look at it. Um, but, I mean, I, I do uh, respect the city manager's decision to, to fund it this year. And if I have to wait another year, I'm okay doing that. So, Sergeant Miranda, would his sergeant expertise, and I don't know what else to call it, be better suited outside of the office than doing volunteer coordinating stuff? No, he, he's not doing volunteer coordinating stuff. What he is doing is all the special detail, all the off-duty stuff that that we handle. So, you know, part of that is is yeah, cool today park, but you know, he's he's making sure our vendors pay us because you know sometimes that's a problem. Uh, making sure that staffing is always there for all of our off-duty jobs. Um, you know, making sure that we have security here for all the commission events and city events all the way around. So would his time be better spent instead of coordinating paperwork, whatever you want to call it, volunteer or special detail or anything like that, out in the field? Oh, absolutely. That's why I'm saying that this position is important. However, I know I can't have everything I want. Okay. You know, if, if that was the case, this budget would be a lot bigger than, than it is because I'm, it's like any other department here in the city. Our city staff does so much extra and they wear so many other hats and they're going in all multiple different directions. So it's just something we all have to realize that um, our city is, is growing, it's expanding all and the, the need and the services are growing and expanding and we're asking our people to keep doing more and more and more. So, you know, it's, yes, it's a very important position, but if I can, if I have to wait a year, I'll wait a year. I was just trying to help you to see if no, you could I, get that classed and, and. I appreciate that. So, if you're fine with it, then 
Well, I? I would rather leave it as is. Thank you. Um, I believe that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything for the police department? Thank you for keeping it lean, Thank you. especially in a oh. year like this year. I do have one more. So last year in June, you said that you did not have to pay your school crossing guard program for April and May because there was no school. Yeah. So help me understand why the year to date for that line item on 3400 on page 40 increased 1850 when we didn't have school and you said you weren't paying them, but it still went up between June and July. Thank you. Yeah, but that was an increase. And just so you know, Commissioner Carison, they're looking for the answer. Yep. Is that isn't that for next year though? I mean, maybe there's increase in need. No, it's the year to date so far in the HTE right. that changed between June and July, eighteen hundred dollars. And I was just wondering why, because this is what you there was no payments required for April and May since there was no school. And I think they have our answer. Yep. They may have been furloughed. Yes. We're trying to figure out how to formulate that answer, huh? It looks like he's singing. <laughs> we are, and I know the commission's not going to like this, but we are paying the county for our DR site for our um, disaster recovery secondary location that we're required to have. We, we didn't have a DR site before, but now we do, and we have to pay like rent for a rack space and stuff in their facility. What's DR? What? Data, right. it's, it's IT related, it's, it's uh, data recovery. Yes. So why are you paying it out of school crossing guard? That's, Help me understand why you would take $1,800 for data recovery rent instead of out of school crossing guards. What's the connection? What's the, the logic behind that? The account is other contractual services. This is a contractual service they have with the county. It's not a school crossing guard account. It's contractual services. So why don't you create another line that says DR recovery contractual services? You have lines for all sorts of headings that have a breakdown, especially a new item. I know, I understand it's rental, and right. I get that. Well, but it's a contractual service, it's not a rental. Okay. Con I mean, that would be a, a mess if you create a, a line, a specific account number for every contract or every rental that you have. I, I don't think that's what she's saying, Mayor. Okay. If I may, I think I think what she's trying to say is you see how underneath the thirty four hundred other contracted services and it lists out oh, the that. full okay. crossing guards or X yeah. amount. There should be another line Sorry. under it that just says data recovery. Exactly. Um, and Sorry, then how much for that is? And how much? Is um, because yeah, this I, this is one of those contracts we literally just approved. I'm going to assume remember. that they didn't know about this at the time they put their budget Hang together. on, they're, they're yeah, because it just started. Okay, right. one at a time, guys. <laughs> that, that is correct. At the time, we didn't have this, so this came midstream, mid-budget, so um, that's the reason why. But we have moved it to um, 4,400 account under yeah. rentals and leases. 34-00 on page 40, you have school crossing guard, and it changed the $1,800. So you're saying that you took $1,800 out of school crossing guard and used it for this data recovery. And what I am requesting so that we can keep apples in the apple bucket and oranges in the oranges bucket, i.e. school crossing guards in that bucket and data recovery in that bucket so we can keep track of it, have a line item similar to what you have on travel per diem. Look at all those lines. You have like 10 lines right there for travel and per diem. It's all broken down.
again, she's not saying line item. She's saying a notation underneath as to where what the expenditures are. A sub line title. Yeah, is that what it, is that the Sarasota County yeah, Rental for IT? Sarasota. It is in the forty four hundred as a as a text for the for what's in the account, and I this needs to have a um, an adjusting journal entry because it shouldn't have been paid out of thirty four hundred. Then it should have been paid out of forty four hundred okay. in so the current I made year. The Jeff Rayers, business manager, police department. I made the error. Well, it came. Okay. It came midstream, yes, and so that new one months. needs to be added. Yes. Yes. So that's I'm good with finances, and we'll that. So you put it in the right bucket. Okay, so you're going to put it in the right bucket. And here it's in there. It's in your HD already. Forty-four hundred account. There's a line item that says it. Sarasota County. Uh, rent, uh, rental for IT. Rental IT. Yes. yes, it's there. I just put it in the wrong bucket. I paid it out of the wrong bucket. So what you're seeing for year to date out of the thirty-four hundred. Eighteen hundred was for two months. Gotcha. So you guys will make that correction. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Do you need a consensus city manager to do that? No, ma'am. We've got it. Thank you. I'll be looking for it. Thank you. Answer the question. That's all I needed. Thank you. Anybody else? No, ma'am. All righty, I think we're done with you, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm glad you got six new hires. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, so they still have to go through the training process? Yes. Yep. Excellent. They're in the city school right now. I will say some prayers that they uh, make they it did. through all the way to the end because I know we're going to need them. Yeah. So thank you. All right. It is now 1030. Do you guys want to take a quick 10-minute break before okay. we? Okay. Um, let's take a break. We'll come back at quarter to 11. So it's actually nine minutes. So we'll see you at 1045. Thank you.
Central Avenue. Hang on one second, Mr. Scott. Okay. Are we okay with IT? Okay. Thank you. All right, so it's 1046. We're back in session. Since this is a workshop, we're going to go ahead and hear public comment. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Scott, if you want to come up, what is it about you and public comment and affecting our IT? <laughs> <laughs> well, all, all my public comments are prepared. You know, I, 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 name a topic, I got one. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like each time you come up, you break our IT. So uh, okay. go ahead. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Scott, Twinkle Avenue, homeowner. Um, I'd like to start off with a question. Why hasn't the city of Northport ever considered property tax reduction goals? That's my question. That's a huge question that needs an immediate answer. Without a concrete answer to that question, we the people of Northport, Florida, will have reached a crossroads in our city's history. And I think that is where we find ourselves today during this budget cycle. My vision for the city is this. We need to reinvent ourselves into a new and leaner era rather than remain a tax and spend local government bureaucracy. The time has come to end the age of large local government, especially for a city whose economic woes have been a major contributor to where we are today. Presently, I see three themes that emerge repeatedly with respect to this city's inability to move forward, and they are as follows. Number one, an inability to garner any relevant business investment that would lead to economic growth, a thriving economy. Number two, an uptick in citizen rebellion against a higher millage rate and the increase, resultant increase in city taxes. And number three, ongoing wrongdoing by our elected city commission and their appointed charter officers. Always remember those who selfishly cling to an oversized government bureaucracy they created, mind you, are part of the problem, not the solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. All righty, city manager, we have IT now. Yes, uh, actually we have Public Works now. Public Works. Oh, Public Works? Yes, ma'am. I'm that sorry. No, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How did I skip Ms. over Fair? Public Works? Okay. Uh, so for Public Works, uh, these slides will include facilities maintenance, road and drainage district, solid waste district, impact fees, R&R, &R, and fleet. So overall for those combined, uh, the proposed increase is $1.3 million or 3.3%. This is the picture of the continuation budget of 37.6 million with budget proposals of 4.4 million or 10%. And this is what makes up those budget proposals. Next one is the only change since the June workshops was a reduction of 1400 for eliminating the code red. Are there any questions on any of these for public works? I have a statement. I was going to make it go ahead, uh, Vice Mayor. at the police uh, presentation also. Would you go back one more slide? I'm sorry. Another one. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, something that I noticed was the increase of those last, this department and the previous, their percentage of increase is far under that 11% point, you know, 11.39 or whatever it is, or even a 10.39. It comes under. So that is actually um, showing a very lean budget. So kudos to those who can achieve that. Does anybody have any questions for uh, road and drainage, public works? Commissioner Carison? Nope, I'm good. All right. Um, I have a couple questions. 
And this is based, uh, my first one is very simple. It's based on yesterday's conversation with Parks and Rec for the transition. They did license checks. They had a budget item for license checks to make sure the operators have a valid license. I don't see that charge in the budget for road and drainage or solid waste to make sure your department has valid licenses, especially with the new in-house mowing employees. We're looking now, Mayor. Thank We're you. Looking now. Yes, ma'am. I just want to make sure it's in there. Mayor, may I ask, uh, for the record, Juliana Belia, Public Works Director, are you asking about the driver's license, the CDLs, or for the, uh, the drug testing licenses? No. Or not licenses, but for drug testing? No. The Parks and Rec yesterday, mm -hmm. and in their budget, they had a driver's license check charge. And she explained that that driver's license check charge in the budget mm -hmm. was a line item so that they could verify that their licenses were current and active and no hiccups in their license. Come on, excuse me. We, we don't have that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we, we, we do that in-house. We do not have a line item. We do not uh, charge a fee, any type of fee for that. When we have an applicant, for example, when they first come to Public Works, uh, Human Resources checks it. We also ask for verification because there's been times when they said they had, for example, a Class B and they didn't. But I do not have a line item to check for that. We do that internally. And each year, for example, um, generally Human Resources, I'll get notified if a license, for example, for some reason has lapsed and the employee didn't renew it. Um, if they had a ticket or something and didn't pay and they have a suspension, I will get notice from Human Resources Department. But we do not have a separate line item to charge for that. No, ma'am. Okay. So then I have to ask. I do that internally. Thank you. So then I have to ask the acting city manager if this department that has a wide variety of licensing requirements um, is able to do it in house. <laughs> Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Um, I'm wondering then why does Park and Rec, and I know it's a small amount and it's it's peanuts, but I, I have to ask. These are excellent, it's an excellent question. Why excellent are... question. Uh, I will ask Mrs. Funheller if she would like to come down and give some insight because I am drawing a blank. I got you. Good morning, Sandy Funheller, Parks and Recreation Director. Um, that is a charge. Um, it's a um, process that's done by HR. <coughs> the charge comes to us from HR risk, I believe. Okay, so if HR is charging Parks and Rec, and I know this is all in-house money, I get it. Why isn't HR charging road and drainage? <laughs> my, my guess is they are. It's just not been captured. My, my guess, Line item. Because, because HR is pretty consistent. They do it for one. They're going to do it for all. So my gut says it's in there. It's just not itemized out. I'll let it go. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Carson. There's always a transition of what the districts pay the general government, because remember, it's, it's public works district, and it's probably buried within there for service of HR. And, and that's possible, but... Mayor, I'd be happy to check it and get an answer for you, you. with HR. Yes, yes, sir. All right, so now we'll go on to, um, in the budget book, and I apologize, I didn't ask these, these couple little questions last month. Um, on page 117, it says not funded project manager. But if you turn the page, we have a construction technician assistant project manager. Right. So if we don't hire a project manager, how do we need an assistant? I'll, I can answer that. <laughs> um, we currently have in the Department of Public Works and the Facilities Maintenance Division a project manager. That project manager oversees all the city projects. 
which there's several. We have, uh, you know, the smaller, you know, kind of um, somebody wants to put a wall up in their office, move a few things around to, I'd like to build a fire station. Um, that work has become too much for one person, so we put in a budget request for a project manager. In addition to a second project manager. In addition to that, we also put in for the construction technician slash assistant project manager. In case the project manager didn't get approved, we could have um, at least someone to assist that project manager. Um, so the in the city manager recommended budget, the project second project manager was not approved. Uh, however, the construction technician slash assistant was. So our intention is to have that as a working position. Um, that position will um, have regular duties in addition with respect to facilities maintenance. In addition, that person is going to provide assistance for the smaller projects. For example, the little stuff that's done at you know, the city current city buildings. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, so we're going to flip over to page 123. And it says training for project manager, and it's something about to get their licensing and stuff. Yes, ma'am. Is explain. that for the Current. existing yes. project managers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I, I just had to make sure that we weren't training somebody that was not even funding. here. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Um, all right. So now we will go on to the infrastructure inspector on page 134. And I go to our vacancy list. And I know you knew this was coming. <laughs> we have a vacant we have a vacant infrastructure inspector that we approved in the last budget that has not been filled. It recently was filled. We did it internally. We had interviews, and the city acting city manager, I believe, just signed off on it last week. So that position has now been filled. Um, since you just filled that position, mm -hmm. that newly filled approved last year position will considerably help with the inspections that need to go on yes because you guys have been behind the eight ball for seven months yes ma'am um maybe you don't need this position we desperately need that position in fact we so much desperately needed it i had to borrow um and out of title somebody from operations and maintenance um to actually be able to keep up with the inspections we do have and that person just so happened to apply for the job and was promoted from within. Um, and that has been going on the better part of the whole budget year. We are very behind. There's many things since, and, I, and I've talked about this before, the road bond project for six years that we didn't do with respect to infrastructure that needs to be done. We actually put in for two infrastructure inspectors and city manager had approved one of those. Um, so inspecting all of the infrastructure throughout the city, um, you know, the bridges, the water control structures, um, staying ahead of the streets. I mean, we annually inspect for what needs to be done the following year, but we need to be also inspecting everything else for continued maintenance. So there's a lot of work in addition to all the construction permits, you know, apart from that, plus the capital improvement projects we have. Um, we've got inspectors now doing a variety of jobs, you know, um, and working a lot of overtime. So we desperately do need the one, the one additional inspector. Yes, ma'am. So now I am going to move on to the in-house mower. Okay. You go to page 77 in the HTE. And I shared this with city manager yesterday after the discussion about the parks transition mm -hmm. line item is 6,400. I'm sorry. The line item is for fleet 40. I think it's 4,600. Yeah. 4,600. Sorry. There is nothing in there for your new equipment that you're planning to purchase. Um, I, I, expressed concern about 
Parks and Rec having a three month, they're going to be checking to see if their charges are actually for the three <coughs> months or for a full year. But your department has nothing in there for a seven month equipment requirement. Similar equipment, similar needs, but there's nothing in there for the for the um, maintenance, the maintenance of the right of way that you guys want to take over for in-house mowing. The the <coughs> first the first year we factored in seven months of assuming it in-house once the contract uh, would run out in March, and we do have allocated for the first year maintenance. We have projected it's going to be three thousand dollars. My apologies, it's not detailed in the maintenance uh, line item, but we can include it in there. But we will have uh, enough, plenty of money in there to cover that. In subsequent years, we will detail it out, but it's going to be roughly maintenance costs will be twenty thousand two hundred twelve dollars and two cents. So we just we just did not uh, detail it out in the repair and maintenance line item. Okay. But we will have sufficient funding. So you're saying your fleet department for admin labor parks re outsourcing is going to total three thousand dollars. The first year maintenance cost will be based on all the new equipment. Yes, ma'am. For $3,000. For seven months. Yes, ma'am. For seven months. Yes, ma'am. So help me understand why for three months for parks equipment is $21,900. I, I don't think she can answer for parks. But again, it, it may be because they're not doing it for three months. This may be a full year. Mm -hmm. So if yours is $3,000 for seven months, We'll just call it fourteen thousand dollars for a full year. Jesus. Something's not adding up. You have more equipment. I, I couldn't answer for them. We can't I'm answer sorry. that. But I, I'll yes, have uh, Parks and Rec uh, give a written response. Yes, sir. But I, I don't. Public Works can't answer for, for Parks. But I, but duly noted. I, I see the discrepancy, and we can have Parks and Rec give a communication about it. And that was the directive right. for yesterday, or from yesterday also. Uh, Mayor, what? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on one second. Uh, Ms. Hold on, Commissioner Carazon. Mr. Rapoon wants to answer. I just want to know what page on the HDE you're at. I'm sorry? What page? 77. What page are you at? On the HTE page 75 under road and drainage. It's at the very beginning, the 4600. Go ahead, Mr. Rapun. Fleet Manager uh, Ken Rapun. Um, so again, what we did for both departments, since these are two new added services, um, we took existing equipment that we currently have, which would be similar to the in-house mowing, and we estimated what it'll cost us for a year. We gave them annual numbers. Now for Parks and Grounds, we took the list that they gave us, which is equipment that we don't already have, and it's items, of, I believe there was 14 items, 14 or 16 items on there, which far exceeds what the in-house mowing is. It's different gear. We utilized the outsourced vendor that provided them the cost of the equipment, as well as the, for leasing, as well as their maintenance schedule. We utilized that and we, we, we you know, assumed, estimated how much that's going to cost over a year as well. So if that 21000 that is not for three months. There is no way, shape, how that that would cost that. I'm assuming that that's for, for a year as well. Um, but that's the cost difference. So yes, it's 3000 for seven months, but the, the equipment is completely different. And there's more of it in parks and grounds than there is in the in-house mowing. Look forward to seeing the actual correct numbers on that. So thank you. And we gave that direction yesterday. I just wanted to bring it up that it wasn't in the budget uh, broken out. And I, I just wanted to make sure we were allocating the funds for it. That's all. So thank you. Um, I did a little bit of research about this in-house mowing. And I am going to state this on the record that I am very, very, very concerned about taking over this finished mowing in-house. We have a contractor who is doing a fine job with this finished mowing. We have received, we have given direction back in 2017 to not do in-house mowing. We had a huge discussion at the commission level. Do we want to take this over? 
It was, uh, I believe, a commission directive to, hey, let's analyze this. And we, we all said no, that it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, it's in this budget without any commission discussion. Um, there was no direction given to put it in. And that kind of concerns me because we already gave direction that the answer was no. And I understand things change. Okay, so we'll, we'll give you things change. But I looked at the equipment list for 2017 when you guys wanted to do this back then mm -hmm. and compared it to now. In 2017, you needed one F-250 for eight employees. This time, you need two F-350s for six employees. If you had eight employees in 2017, and now you're saying you only need six, I do not see how you can do all of the things that the contractor is doing, all of those locations, with six employees that are not private businesses. You know, the private businesses, I see them out there mowing in the, in the rain. I don't know. Do ours mow in the rain or a storm? I don't know. Um, our, uh, the private company um, empties the trash with or without COVID. Obviously, we can't do that because of COVID, because of risk. Um, I don't see how six employees are going to be able to do all of that work. I don't see why the equipment lists are different. Why with eight employees, you only need one F-250, but now you need two F-350s. Can you help me understand that? I'm gonna try to address, I'm gonna, if, if, if it's okay, Mayor, I'm gonna first address kind of the overall questions, and then I'm gonna uh, ask Chuck speak to, uh, speak to the equipment and the employees. Uh, first of all, um, things have not been fined. We have content, continued to struggle with our current mowing contractor, uh, dating back to uh, the Biscayne landscaping. Um, the, the contractor we currently have, uh, as in w difference to previous mowing contractors, does an absolutely phenomenal job when it comes to mowing. And typic, uh, especially in the rainy season, when you have the centers of the swales along the uh, arterials just filled with water, they inch up and get closer and closer and closer every time to make sure that they get as much area as they can mowed. Okay, that being said, there's many other things that they're not doing a good job on and we've had struggles with. Um, they do not do a good job doing the vertical mowing, uh, picking up the trash, keeping things off the sidewalks. Um, we have had instances where I have personally seen them throw uh, vegetation they've collected onto private property. I've seen them drive on our sidewalks numerous times with their gators, including last week a batwing mower, and I called Mr. Speak instantly and asked him to email the contractor. We have hundreds and hundreds of pictures with respect to deficiencies that are conducted on a weekly basis and sent to them by email. We are currently having our city attorney review a notice to cure. Uh, I was going to short pay them, but pursuant to the contract, I was not able to do that. So I will continue providing them the list with deficiencies and paying them in full. Um, this takes up an enormous amount of my staff's time to oversee this. That is why I asked Mr. Speak to do a complete analysis on taking it back in house. Uh, and these are the numbers we've come up with. We feel very confident we can do uh, a better job than not just our existing contractor, but contractors we've had in the past. And since I've been in this department, it is a constant struggle, not just this contractor, but the other contractors. So, Mr. Speak, if you'd like to get up, and, and our, our people, Mayor, they do, um, they do work in the rain, and we are past the COVID where they have to pr wear protective gear to pick up the trash, both in solid waste and road drainage. Julie, was that email part of the email we received? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the other day? Yes, sir. Uh, the back and forth? Yes, sir, it was. 
Yes, sir. Uh, Chuck Speak, Operations and Maintenance Manager. Mayor, I'm not sure what what analysis you're looking at. Uh, I know we did present July, this. July 11, 2017, it was in the backup material from when we had our first discussion um, and the equipment needs that you had and the personnel costs. That's, okay. I'm, I'm just letting I, you know. I, what I just I got. don't have it in front of me to that's verify right. that that's actually what I, what I put together because I can't imagine I would have put down one pickup truck for eight employees. It just sounds like <laughs> a mistake that I wouldn't have made, but not that it couldn't have happened. Um, I would like to say that, that we've been handling now in-house, if there's concern about us handling in-house mowing. Currently, uh, we handle Biscayne Drive in-house, Fire 81, 82, City Hall, PD, Community Education Center, Family Service Center, the Art Field, Parks Maintenance Building, Utilities Admin. Those are all done in-house by in-house staff. Uh, if you have concerns about the quality of work we do or whether we get things done or not, that's that's what we're doing in-house right now. Okay, I'm very confident with the amount of equipment and the amount of staff that we need for this. Trust me, I've had three years to watch the contractor and see how many people are out there mowing every day. So these numbers are solid. And the reason we looked at this again, when this was presented the first time to the commission, we had no cost of what this contract was going to cost us. We were basing our analysis on the previous contract of the contractor we had to fire. So we were estimating it was going to cost us between four hundred dollars and five hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, this contract came in at a million dollars, just under nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. So our comparison at that point was was too late. By the time that contract came in or that that quote or bid came in, we had already had the discussion, we had presented our numbers didn't make sense if it was only going to be $400,000 a year to take it in house, it would have been easier to contract. Seeing the actual numbers now, and the amount of staff time that we have to put into managing this contract, and I can't control the contract. Okay? I can tell him to do it, I can tell him to do it, I can tell him to do it, I can't make him do it. I can make my people do it. So we're looking at over $300,000 savings every year in the outlying years. So I am also very concerned with your ability to hire the necessary staff to do this in-house mowing. And it goes back to my trusty little uh, vacancy sheet <laughs> that you have five equipment operator ones that are vacant. Mayor, we and have, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. And, and <clears throat> two equipment operator twos. So you have a total of six op open positions. Uh, between ones and twos, and you're still going to be hiring six more. And these vacant positions go back all the way to October of 2019 um, to more recently in March or April. If you can't keep these positions that we need for the swale mowing that we hire a lot for, um, to keep those going, and these are the same positions for the in-house mowing. If you're down six and this gets approved, that makes it down 12. How are you going to maintain those roads if you do not have staff? Because I guarantee you the city's hiring practices are so much more stringent than a private contract. I'll, I'll, I'll answer and then you know, stay here, Chuck. Uh, well, first of all, um, Mr. Speak, and I, you can tell exactly when your um, interviews are scheduled, but because of COVID, we had to put everything on hold. So we've not been able to, of course, fill the positions. Um, however, immediately when we had the permission, we immediately advertised and scheduled interviews outside because we wanted to make sure we keep everything safe. Uh, and also we have skill set tests. They have to be um, pursued. But if you want to explain. Yeah, and, and these, understand that some of these, these openings, again, we kind of put, were put on hold with COVID. Previous to that, we've had, uh, and even during COVID, we've had some retirements. We'd have people yeah. leave for whatever reason. That typically moves one of the lower class operators yeah. up. 
that opens up the ones. That's why you see we have more ones open than anything else. It is from that uh, promotion from within. And the ones, because of that, have been stacking up. And I believe uh, we've got three or four positions, EO1s that were posted that we have applications for now that they're setting up the, the interview dates, which will be in the next week. I'm just very concerned with the amount of work you guys already have, mm -hmm. the amount of personnel you're already down, and now you're adding more fuel to that mess. And our roads to maintain them is important, and especially at the higher level because they're high visibility roads. Um, you can hide things in neighborhoods, um, but these high visibility roads, you can't. And I, I am very concerned with that. I'm concerned with the equipment differences between 2017 and now also. So um, I said my piece, um, Vice Mayor, go ahead. Mayor. Hang on, Vice Mayor's got the floor. Yep. Uh, we as commission, when COVID came about, were screaming and hollering and kicking to freeze new hires to if it wasn't essential you know please do not hire anybody so a lot of these i'm seeing became vacant during the covid process and you couldn't bring somebody in unless it was essential and had approval of the city manager and he was reacting to what commission was saying and not allowing these positions to be filled. There's only one of them that I see was really uh, back uh, any point in time that was, you know, further back. Mm -hmm. And I know some of them, I would believe, would be hard to fill. So I have an understanding of why there are so many of them vacant at this point. My question is, how easy do you feel it will be to fill these equipment operator one positions. I mean, do they feel pretty well when you put, you're able to put out to, for hires? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the, the EO ones and EO twos are the less skilled, I, I hate to say less skilled. They, they don't have the- They require the less skills. The, yeah, they, they don't have the extensive heavy equipment side that the EO threes have. So these are the easiest to fill, it's our entry level mm -hmm. and, and Typically, whenever we fill in these entry level positions, they start in this kind of work, the landscape side of our, our business. So I could apply when I retire? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and, and she brings up a great point, if I may. Are, is CDL required for, for ones we, and twos? We are, everybody that works for Public Works has a CDL as far as field personnel. They have to have a, have a motorcycle capacity. license. Does that count? <laughs> We're, we're actually also, if I may, we are also introducing, because of the uh, CDL testing and training and so forth, uh, you just can't go there and, you know, get your CDL license like before. You have to go either to um, a, a, t a location, a school or something, but we are going to have somebody in-house trained and certified to be able to conduct the classes and also give the tests. So you have a form from uh, DMV. You will bring that if you're a certified instructor, and the employee would bring that to uh, DMV in order to get their CDL license. So things have changed. It's a lot harder. So we are trying to uh, do that in our department so, so we can train folks and, and get them certified and able to get the form signed to get their license. Yeah, the state no longer does CDL testing. No. They, they, it's all third party now, so you right. have to pay a, a school, basically. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very costly, especially with these lower level positions where these where, where we're trying to hire an entry level. Uh, it's very costly for them to get the CDL. So what we would like to do is get to the position where we can hire them in uh, with a learner's permit and then do in-house training and help them get their license to, uh, to grow. So we employees. should be hopeful that these positions could feel rel relatively confident. quickly. All right. I'm going to yield the floor to Commissioner Amrich. Yeah, I'm, you're, you're, you're in my wheelhouse here because seven years ago, I had six to eight employees. 
We did City Hall, Sumner, Biscayne, US 41, all the other city facilities, the fire stations, Vets Park, Highland Ridge, McKibben Park, Pine Park, Blue Ridge Park, and we also trimmed every single palm tree within the city Northport's limits. That's me and eight workers, year in, year out. So the staff can definitely handle those contracted areas because we had much, much more. And our schedule was seven to 10 days and everything got done. So that's just a little history lesson. If you're worried about the work getting done, it will get done. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Carousel. Yes, Mr. Speak, um, you say that this is a cost savings of over $300,000 over so many years, is that what you said? Uh, it will be, we will realize in the second year, uh, of course the first year we have to buy all the equipment, we have the, the capital investment there. Uh, the first year we're looking at a savings of $44,622. In year two we will save uh, 353, just over $353,000. And then uh, it slowly goes, it, it drops, incrementally slightly due to just increases in costs, but out until 2024, we'll still be saving over $300,000 a year based uh, on what the current contract price is now. Okay, so do you account for staff time in, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm choking to death. <coughs> staff, staff time that's been utilized for the um, contract management, uh, the city attorney now having to place time in that. Um, the fact that the uh, city has had to go out and fix certain items, possible issues with infrastructure replacement. Have we accounted for any of those costs when we talk about the cost savings? Those, those costs are not calculated into this. This is just the actual work and the force on the ground. Okay, Good and so had had we done this three years ago, the equipment would be less money, correct? It would have been slightly yes, slightly less. Yeah, and we would not have utilized all those things I just mentioned that are not being calculated, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Is there anything else, Commissioner Carousel? Thank you, means I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, if I can touch on one thing, yeah. have so just some clarification on something that you brought up earlier uh, about the equipment. Uh, Assistant Director Bramble reminded me that when we proposed that back in 17, we proposed using some equipment that was being surplused as far as trucks to offset that cost the first year and try to get another year out of those trucks, push off that capital investment. So that, that accounts for some of that difference in what you're looking at now, as well as we also had pulled this gain out of the contract since then. So that's something we're already doing in house that would have been uh, factored into that, the numbers back then. Um, just real quick, looking at your finished mowing comparison, <clears throat> the sheet that you uh, gave us by email the past week or so. <clears throat> if you go to fertilization and mulch, in the first year it's 21000 for seven months, but then in 22 it jumps 132000 for a full year. Could you explain why it's $110,000 more? I believe we were going to have the contractor mulch uh, before the end of this contract. So that cost would have already been captured mm -hmm. in the contractor's costs. So we won't be mulching in that seven month period. That will pick back up. So there's fertilization and mulching that the contractor will do in the current contract before it ends in March. We will then take care of the fertilization from March until October. October then we will be the ones fertilizing and doing all all of the mulching for that next fiscal year, and that's what the difference in that costs. Thank you for that explanation. It just kind of jumped out at me, and I had to ask 
Um, also, if you look at your personnel costs, Here, can I, can I'm sorry, I go ahead, Commissioner Carasone. I didn't know you wanted to speak. Go ahead. Yeah, that's about the mulch. And I, I, I'm telling you, I just can't even, this has to be replaced every single year, correct? Correct. All right. So why are we not looking at rock or pebble or something that is less um, and uh, less of an expense over the long term. I mean, I, I'm all about, you know, investing in now so that it saves tomorrow. And I just don't understand why we're not looking at that. And, and there's, there's two sides to that. Uh, the mulch is more natural. It breaks down. It, it kind of helps our, our plantings. The second thing, and I'll, I'll put on the one of the other hats is anytime we put gravel anywhere near our roads or in our medians, we end up with some safety hazards for traffic uh, due to people going off the road and then it scatters or with rainstorms, things pushing out into the road. It's, it's never good to have gravel close to your travel lanes. So where are we mulching that's close to a travel lane? Can you help me? Well, I mean, we have all of our medians that mulch, all of our uh, roadsides, on Toledo and Sumter have mulch around the beds. And gravel isn't forever. You put down rock, stone, I don't know if anybody's done that at their house. It's the ground. Oh, yeah, and the, it takes about it five, disappears. five to ten years, yeah. Depending on what you do for a, for a base around it. But I just, I feel like there's... I know mulch is cheap at first, but it's the maintenance that sometimes, you know, I just think there's got to be a better way than having to spend this kind of money every single year. So that's all. Thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, if you go to the personnel costs, I think there's an error, and I, I, I will defer to you after I explain. So if you look at the first year, it says $274,600. If you take that and divide it by seven, just being general, it comes out to about $3,900 per, I'm sorry, $39,000 per month. All right. So you take that per month and times it by 12, you actually come up with $470,000, not counting any increases in salary and benefits for year two. And, and I'm just curious, how did you arrive at your 376 number? Because so, it's about $100,000 less than what I came up with. So it's more the 274 number than the 376. Uh, 274 number has a start date of 1-1. One, one. So you're not, you're, you're 10 months, not seven months. And the reason we have a start date for that is okay. we want to bring them in, we want to get them trained, we want to make sure everything's speed uh, understood now thank you for that sure. thank you for that and that makes that makes sense you you wait you're going to train them for two months well we're going to put them to work yes ma'am now the start date is one one that doesn't mean we're going to get them hired one one that's that's what and, the budget start date I, the proposal was based on i appreciate the information that it's not for seven months like I was figuring based on what your um, everything else is based on seven months except for that so thank you for that please cleared that up thank you anybody else have anything uh, I just have one question in some of the backup material or the emails that we were sent uh, it's showing the price boulevard widening uh, project land acquisition mm -hmm. and uh, most, I mean, 12 of them are marked with yes, there's four, but one of them has two properties. Who's overseeing the handling of the acquisitions? Whose responsibility is it? The city attorney's office is overseeing that for us. Okay. Uh, so you are the one who reaches out and handles all of this? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Does anybody have anything for road and drainage, solid waste, um, facilities, maintenance, anything else, guys? I'm good. Thanks.
Uh, I, I'm going to just check one spot, see if it's not. still warm middle spring. Just waiting on that one. <laughs> All righty. Um, so I guess at this point, it is now 1130. So let's move on to IT now. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Farrell will uh, start off and uh, defer to Ms. Ryan. Thank you. Okay, so these next slides will include only IT in the general fund. Um, so for that, the proposed increase is 455000 or an 18% increase. And here is the continue. The base budget is two point four million. The budget proposals of four hundred seventy-seven thousand, and those are made up of the majority is uh, storage area network replacement, and then you can see the makeup of the rest of the four hundred seventy-seven thousand. And the only change since the June workshop we made were the addition of laser. Laserfish licenses were transferred from HR to IT. Are there any questions on any of these proposals? Commissioner Carison, do you have any questions for IT? No, thank you. Anybody else? What fund is the storage area being pulled from? It's a transfer from the general fund to the R&R, and this is half of the cost. So they're not doing that project this year. They'll be doing it next year. They're saving up for it. This is saving up for it. Mm -hmm. And it's half of what it will be. We'll see this again next year. Yes. When will the project be started? It should be next year because they'll have, they'll have the funding. Okay. Thank you. I just have one little one. Um, looking at the line on the HTE page 18, the overtime account for the 1400, 14-00. Um, in 2019, you had $268 in overtime. Year to date so far is 420. Yet you guys are asking for $1,670 in overtime. Is there any way you guys can cut $1,000 of that? And I, I know that there is overtime costs based on prior year's actual numbers, um, but I don't think it's warranting up $1,670. For the record, Eric Ryan, a team manager. We can look to do that. Um, I'm still learning where our monies come from and how to balance that. Uh, with uh, part of what we've done is keep that in there and cut contracted services who generally run IT in this room. And so part of the staff that run this room for you are hourly employees. And when the meetings run late, we need the budget to be able to pay them. And so if y'all could cut down on the time of the <laughs> meeting, I knew that was coming. You will save some money. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> so basically, what you're saying is that thousand for the or 1600 for the overtime is a lot less than hiring a contractor to come in for those times. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm just checking where's the contracted account um, looking for it. 3105. Thank you. Well, actually, um, 3105, it says professional services other. Uh, last year was $20,000, and this year it's um, 80000 What's Gartner Support Services, 1785? Uh, page 18. 
So you have one large amount that's in the budget for 1585 for um, technology support services, and it looks like it's a, a company to come in and help you guys perform better in organization, so it has nothing to do with meetings. Um, I, I don't see a reduction for anything. So we cut them out the year before, which is why you don't see them in, in okay. this last year, but okay. why you did see overtime in last year's budget. Yeah, last year's budget had $268 in overtime in this year's budget. So far, year to date for fiscal year 19 slash 20 is $420. So I'm, I, again, just wondering if you can cut your overtime. Well, your, that's to date also, and we right. still got a quarter left for the year. One month of that, we're not here. But we still have a quarter. September, of the, of that's the only one left. October. October, no, it's October 1st is this whole new budget. Well, I don't think it would have in July, August, and September anyhow. So. Part of part of our change is there's previously been one person running the room, and we intend to to train the three technicians, our service desk, desk we'll revisit technicians, that next year, so that we can it? rotate who is working the meetings. I'd like to get a consensus to see about cutting that down to um, to the six hundred and seventy five dollars. It's reducing it by nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. I'm a no, Commissioner Hanks. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Emmerich. No, and Commissioner Carrison. I'd rather have it in there if it's needed and put it back in the general fund at the end of the year. So I'm a no. Thank you. Here we go. I, I will add that we are trying to work flexible schedules for those individuals so that perhaps they can come in later on those days and not eat up those hours. So it is not my intent to spend it if I don't have to. Thank you. And you demonstrate that by saying that you're trying to train and cross train other employees. That gives you the ability to do that. Until you have that accomplished, that same person's just eating up all the overtime. So thank you very much. I think we're also going to see a lot more technology use with COVID, and that's another concern because I don't see this going away, and we may be going back to where we're relying more heavily on technology than in-house, so or in, you know, in person. Possible. We'll see. But thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think anybody else has any other questions on. No. Okay. So we'll move on to city manager's budget. Uh, go ahead, acting yes. city manager. Yes, we have a fun fact about Yes, you? I do have a fun fact. <laughs> well, be good. I've got a fun fact. Uh, my fun fact for Carrie is, <laughs> Carrie was born in Bermuda. What's that? Bermuda. So she- I heard Bermuda, but what did you Bermuda. say before? About Carrie was born in Bermuda. Uh, she's Obviously, she's a, a U.S. citizen, but uh, and and she taught English as a second language uh, at one time in her life, which is very interesting. So that's why she she's my interpreter. Because obviously, some <laughs> people, my wife says I slur my 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 words a lot, and she helps interpret when I try to talk. So thank you, Gary. And fun fact about me: um, I got my first city manager position in the city of Groveland, Florida. I was 29 at the time. I was one of the youngest oh, uh, city managers um, at the time. Um, so that's a little fun fact. Where's Groveland? Groveland is in Lake County. Near Clare it, it now touches uh, Claremont, Florida. They're right next to each other. I was there cool. for seven years. Very cool. What's that? Just, above. Just, Just above. a couple of years ago. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Boy, you got a brownie point. <laughs> <laughs> so Go. next up, we got city manager's budget. Uh, the proposed increase for it is one hundred twenty-four thousand, or ten point six percent. The budget proposals are fifteen thousand, and 
there's only, I'm sorry, let me go back. Yep, this one. There were no changes since June. Uh, real estate acquisition, the 15,000 is the only budget proposal that we brought forward from the June meetings. And there were no changes since the June meetings as far as additions or reductions. Are there any questions for city managers? Any questions for city manager? I don't. Double checking to see. I have nothing. Uh, Commissioner Carasone, do you have any questions? I just want to make sure. I have nothing, believe it or not. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Easy peasy. Y'all are too kind. Thank you. <laughs> so that will bring us up to uh, city attorney. Now, fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> Uh, for our illustrious uh, city attorney, uh, uh, Mrs. Slayton worked as an on-air talent at a radio station and public access television for several years. And not only is she that, but she, her and her family uh, have raised and fostered at least 10 rescue dogs. Oh, how cool. So her, 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 her smooth, calming voice is something that she uh, acquired and developed over her many years in the uh, radio biz. Yeah, the radio what voice. Your huh? on the radio? We're going to have to go see if they have it on YouTube or something. Yeah, we're going to YouTube. That show was Panola Pride. What was it? Panola Pride. That was on 104.3 FM, the pulse of Panola, the heartbeat of East Texas. Oh, <laughs> oh. And this is your station identification <laughs> break. <laughs> Panola, Texas. That's the name of the county. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> you haven't lost your touch with radio stuff. So. So Thank you. Now that was 100% radio Texas. voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Okay, so for the city attorney, we are proposing an increase of 139,000 or 16%, and that is mainly due to the addition of the paralegal. Um, that is the budget po proposal, the 61,000 that we see here. And here it is again, the paralegal, and then we do have educational assistance also. We did not make any changes from the June workshops. So were there any questions on these that we brought forward from there? Does anybody have any questions for city attorney's office? No, ma'am. I do not. Commissioner Carason? No, I have nothing. Wonderful job. Thank you. I do have one. Since our last meeting, we were presented with a citizen's initiative. Obviously, the expenses associated with that are not in this budget, I would assume that they are not in this budget. Um, we have to do a feasibility study. We have to hire outside um, attorneys to help us navigate that contraction. And I want to double check, is any of that expense added in this budget? If so, where? And if not, I think we need to add something in here. <laughs> so we do have line items um, in our budget for outside counsel. Um, we have an outside legal non-litigation file, an outside legal litigation line, and professional services other. These are the line items that we charge uh, our outside counsel expenses to. And because of the nature of retaining outside counsel, you never know exactly how much it's going to cost, and you, and you also never know exactly when you're going to need it. That's very you know, fact-specific and driven by whatever might arise. So the cost that the city will bear or outside counsel on the related to the de-annexation contraction petition, as well as other matters, will be drawn from those budget lines um, as necessary. With respect to the feasibility study, that is not um, part of the city attorney's budget. With the city attorney's office, would not be conducting that study. That would fall somewhere under this, the city manager's rubric. NDS, NDS is handling it. It'll be absorbed in the NDS budget. So do you feel that we need to increase the outside litigation services to help because you've it looks like you've only got like $35,000. Well, we we actually and, and previously we've asked for these these three lines to be merged. Um, 
the way that they're divided between non-litigation, other, and litigation is not really exactly how we always utilize the funds. It just depends on how the funds are needed. So sometimes we draw more out of the non-litigation and less out of the litigation, but still, you know, don't surpass the bottom line on the budget. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that there's funding for this because we don't know how much this is going to cost. And um, I just want to make sure what we have budgeted on top of what you have budgeted is pre citizen initiative. I want to make sure what we have in there is for post citizen initiative. So that way then it's it's accurately being reflected in that there is enough money. Yeah, we don't know how much it's going to cost. Um, I guess that we would have to come forward with a budget amendment if it were to exceed what we're allocated. Uh, Acting city manager, do you have any idea how much a feasibility study is going to cost for NDS? I could swag it. Uh, uh, and you remember what swag? Uh, the the I, an estimate, just a, an estimate. I think is fifty to seventy five thousand. Frank, what do you think? Yeah, about fifty to seventy five. If I had to guess. That's what most of our other feasibility studies are, you know, yeah. 50, 60,000. So if we, so you're saying that that 50 to $75,000 is going to be absorbed by neighborhood development services. How is that? Um, if you, if you, if y'all want to, I mean, if you want to amend this proposed budget and add that, by all means, I, I was trying to, we were trying to be, uh, Cognizant of the fiscal constraints. Right. The only question I would have is what line is that up to 75000 coming out of, of NDS? And I know this isn't the city attorney's budget that I'm talking about right now, but the topic has come up. So just curious as to where up to $75,000 would be placed in the NDS budget. Just to make sure it gets. If you were going to add, I assume it would be under contracted or consulting services as far as absorption. Um, yeah, we haven't done a detailed that. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't done a detailed analysis. So I'm looking at other contractual services and, oh, that's planning and zoning. Would, would it come out of planning and zoning? And the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because I actually thought it was in the city attorney's budget. So I would have asked this question during NDS, but I... Wouldn't this come out of building and the permit fees or not? No, no this would not be a no. purple, it paid out of building fund. This would have to be other contract labor or something. Yeah, but uh, for, for, for the record, Frank Miles, Director of Neighborhood Development Services. Yeah, we will, uh, we will insert that in um, our budget, whatever uh, the you know, estimated amount would be. Previously, when we worked through the city attorney's office, as we, as we hired outside counsel for the 7-Eleven, so I would think this would be kind of a similar type of an arrangement. Um, that was unanticipated as well. Are you comfortable with the amount that you have in that line, though, to cover yeah. such kind yeah, of I would, services? Uh, yes, uh, I would okay. uh, suggest that we would add more, of course, we will work to minimize the, um, you know, the reliance on that by using staff to be able to pull together as much of that information as possible. We'll, we'll find the money if we have to transfer uh, from other departments, but I, I'm pretty confident that in a budget of 100 and something, $70 million, we'll be able to absorb that $75,000 cost. And figure out a way to make we it. don't need to add anything to If it. you want okay. to. By all means, we, we thank you. I don't you. want to. I understand. I understand. <laughs> what I'm trying to communicate is I think we can absorb it. Actually, actually, I prefer the term we can find it. To say that you absorb it sounds like you're doing some kind of trickery or magic oh, okay. or something. But to find it, to be able to cover the cost, okay. I think is a little more transparent than saying we're going to absorb it in some other line item because well, it's not something we need to well, Let me hide. communicate. We can make it happen with the resources you've given us in this current budget. Perfect, know. sir. Thank you. Wanted to 
make sure we were covered for that very expensive uh, endeavor we're going to be undertaking. It helped out. Thank you. Um, anybody else have anything for city attorney? No, ma'am. All righty. So we are now at 12 o'clock, and I'm looking for my little. What's next? Oh, there it is. That's not quite 12. Lunch. City Actually, clerk, we're, city we can yeah we can go on to clerk. Oh, I don't think so because I got a big one on clerk's department. Lunch um, then. If you guys, clerk's is at one o'clock, so we are basically right on schedule. Actually, we're nine minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> um, you guys want to just take break and come back at one? Uh, we have. Clerk Commission in Utilities uh -huh. remaining, that's it. And then we come back at 501, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, I don't have a problem with doing that then. Can we move on to maybe a uh, commission real quickly and then, or can we not go out of, well, yeah, we can. Yeah, we just can. Push. I, I just want to try to get one other thing done because I, I have a lot to do before tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? Okay. Pack your suitcase. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I, I was think I was thinking the same thing as skip clerk and go to commission then. All right. So well, we'll go ahead yeah. and do city commission. You got what I was going to suggest, ahead. Mayor. Um, how long do you think the, you're going to be with clerks? And I'm not trying to put you on a timeline, but know. but if we just took a break, then came back, finished up, and then broke until five o'clock would be accepted. Uh, we have we have three other departments to finish. We have commission, clerk, and utilities. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You think I, that? I just I I can muddle on through and take lunch later, but I want to be respectful I mean, of staff's I lunch. Ask, I don't ask, know, you know what, what city want manager to wants to do. If you want to continue on. We are here at your at, at, at your disposal. At what we will work around what you desire. So well, let's tell try, us what you want. Let's try to get commission done in seven minutes. Okay. There you go. All right. So we have the commission. Do you have fun facts about each of us? Well, <laughs> I'm pleading the field. Well, <laughs> we, we appreciate the leadership that y'all uh, uh, impart into staff. And we are excited to, to get this budget on the road. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We didn't have much. What, what about my radio voice? <laughs> Go ahead. Hit us, hit us with it. You can always find fun facts on Facebook. You can call, find I don't fun. call that fun either. <laughs> no. Well, they do. Okay, Commissioner. I have a question. Hang on. We have a, a little mini presentation. Go ahead, Ms. Kim. Okay, well, for Commission, the proposed increase is $42,000. Or 9.32%. And I believe Carrie uh, may be here to speak to the salary um, and how that was calculated. Hi, for the record, Carrie Branco, Assistant City Manager. So I know there was some discussion earlier, uh, talk of a large percent increase from 20 to 21 for the commission budget. So talking it over with HR, one of their staff people actually calculate the payroll and for the budget for the upcoming year. So if you all recall, I want to say maybe a year or two ago, the commission went ahead and approved um, to use the uh, state, and, and sorry if I'm not using correct words, but either state statute or ordinance that county commissioners use to calculate their increases. We applied that to the city commission. Within that is a methodology based on a percentage of population and about three or four different factors that is how, how the salary is calculated. So for 20 to 21, the increase is not based on a call or a merit. It's based on a formula driven by this state statute. And so our what we did with our estimate for um, the population is we increased by 5% 5, 5 for 21. And so that makes a little bit of difference. We get the real numbers in August. If there are any changes, that's the only factor that would make a change in your salary. Right now, it's lying around close to 32,000. Based on the calculation, commission would be making around $36,000. 
if that number changes, fluctuates, it will bring that down and we'll have a better number coming into September. But just to be clear, if I can just kind of springboard off of that for the other, other conversations around salary increases, the budget was not based on 20 to 21. We calculate our salaries based on actuals. We take a number, we choose say April this year, whatever the actuals are for this year, we then add 5%. Three and a half as an average for Merritt and one and a half for COLA. That will not equal to a straight three to 5% increase. If I just looked at finance and city manager's office earlier this morning, and it was about a five to 7% increase from one year to the other. Again, we're not comparing budget to budget, it's actuals for this year, and then calculating a percentage to get to 21. Factors could include in 20's budget for new employees, we only budgeted nine months. So for 20, it's gonna be full month cost. We have people that we hire above minimum. So whatever it looked like in 20 in a budget, it's gonna look much higher in 21. Um, and basically looking at pay for performance, it's, that is how we dole out our merit increases. If you've got a small department that everybody did fabulous and they got up to 5%, that increase is gonna look very different come 21 compared to 20 what was in the budget. So I, I hope I provide a little bit of insight. Again, it's not apples to apples, it's based on actuals plus a percentage to get to 21. Those actuals are based on what everybody's current salary is right now two, month, two or three months ago. And I think a part of what she's saying is, I believe vacancies are budgeted at the minimum. Yes. So not that they might be hired above the minimum to get the right candidate kick, to get the right skill set, but they were in the budget at the minimum. And most of our new hires, we are, we are bringing them in above our minimum yes. to midpoint or after or higher than midpoint. I have a question. <clears throat> um, when you are looking at that formula that is supplied by the state for commission salary, <clears throat> did you take into account that we reduced the base? There's a category in that formula called base. And we, we as a commission reduced that base. Um, did you factor in that change, we lowered it considerably compared to what the state had as the base. So ma'am, I can't speak to the individual <clears throat> numbers. Again, that was calculated by an employee, unfortunately is on leave right now. So just through communication, I got the generalization of how that's calculated, but to the details of how it was actually done, I can't speak to all those, that formula to know if a number was increased or decreased to come up with that. 13% increase from last year to this year. I don't, I don't know those details. Mayor, the formula is actually, it, it was inspired by the state, um, but it's actually codified in the city code. And you have your base salary identified in the city code. Those numbers Correct. are there in the city code. So it's in the code. Did, when you guys were factoring commission salaries, did you use what is in the code that we codified as our formula or did you use the states? I'd have to get back to you, Commissioner. I do not know. We can definitely follow up with how it was actually calculated. I want I want to say it was, but without knowing the details or having the staff person here, I, I really can't speak to that. Um, that has to be the base of what was calculated per code because that's what they did last year. I, I would assume that too, Commissioner. I just want to make sure because this is a huge increase in salaries. The same employee did the calculation last year as did this proposed budget. So I can't imagine, I could be wrong, but I can't imagine that she woke up one day and said, I'm gonna choose a different methodology. I just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 there's, there's no rhyme or reason why that would happen, but, but we'll check with her. Go ahead, Commissioner Amrich. All right. I have a question. Oh, she didn't say thank you. I apologize. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Carson, go ahead, please. Okay, back to commission. The intern travel and training amount of $830. And then, but there was something else that was related to this intern. 5,500? Yeah. Uh, 
look here. Let's see here. We got the 40. And it's 5,500. There it is, 5,500. So that's another 250. There's a thousand dollars. I mean, it's not much, like you said. But I don't. I just don't see us getting an intern this year. I mean, it's been every year we're trying to do this, and I just don't know if it if we should even keep it in there. Or I guess that's my question. I agree with you one hundred percent. Same here. <laughs> I say pull it. We actually had that discussion last last month, so I'm glad to see there was a change of heart. So yes, let's get a consensus to pull the intern travel. I wasn't there for the conversation on the commission, I don't think so. That's okay. Um, all right, yeah. I say pull the intern travel and per, pull the intern training and travel. Pull 5,500 and the 40, zero, zero. So let's get that consensus, uh, Commissioner Carasone. Uh, Commissioner Hanks? Yes, we're going to need it. Vice Mayor? Yes. I am absolutely yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Carasone, I didn't hear your vote. I would assume it's yes, but let's hear it from you. Yes. Thank you. We have consensus to pull okay. that out of the budget. Ma Madam Mayor, if I could. Uh, hey. Hang on, hang on, Commissioner Carasone, uh, Acting City uh -huh. Manager, wants to speak. Hang on one second. S staff has confirmed uh, y'all's salary was... Um, yeah, got, oh, I thought you said it was confirmed. I apologize. Never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, uh, go ahead, Commissioner Carasone. Okay, next. Um, the printing and binding. I see that there is... Um, Oh, no, here it is. There's $8,440 for the Art Advisory Board fund request. Can someone explain that one? I can if you'd like my recollection of what it is, unless you'd rather hear it directly from staff. But I thought it had to do with um, the art in City Hall, the framing and matting for the... I think it's the students that decorate City Hall once or twice a year. Um, it had to do with that. We had, a, a, I remember when I was a brand new commissioner, we had a joint advisory board meeting with them and they explained that that's what that funding is for. But if staff Okay, has, but I, I, I thought we, I mean, we've all, the actual of 2019 was 2,200. Why is there such an increase? Good question. It, it could be that it was because we had that public art, that uh, spoon bill that was put up, may have been an uh, increase in costs, and it got carried over to this year because of last year. I don't know. I don't think the spoon bill is even in this. The uh, city clerk... Uh, calculated y'all's budget, so you'll have to show. I don't, we can't answer. Ms. That. Heather, can you help us understand how come our advisory board request went up to 80, is 8,400? I cannot, but Becky can. Ms. Becky? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like um, the art advisory board brings a proposed amount to commission. Um, the backup that I supplied, I'm not sure if if you all have a copy of it. Um, that's the amount that the art board had requested from commission. Can you tell me how much that they used last year? It looks like in 2017, they requested $6,332. But what did they use? And that, oh, I don't know. I don't have that in front of me. I just have the supporting documents, what was requested from the Art Advisory Board to, to commission. 6600 in 2017? It was $6,332. But that's what was requested. That's not what was used or budgeted. Um, I don't have in front of me what was used. I can just um, tell you what was requested. 
In 2018, it was eight. It was the same amount, eight thousand four hundred forty-one dollars. It looks like it stayed the same. But again, that's not what was budgeted, nor is it what was used. So I guess that would be a question for um, finance. What was used and what was budgeted? I believe Lisa's. And I would that. say 18 and 19, really. Or, sorry, 19 and 20. And they're looking right now. They're, they're digging. Yep. They're digging through to see that number. So hang on. Need some Jeopardy music while we're waiting. Right. <laughs> well, the problem it's and it's not paid to and them, so I don't that. really know what. I'm just looking through what was paid out of that account. Framing arts in the right. hall might that might I'm be it because we do the that's um, be a portion of it. Yeah, so that sounds last like last year was not the current year we're in. Last year, eighteen slash nineteen was twenty one forty two. Twenty one forty two. And nothing in the current year. The only thing in the current year you bought in that account is the challenge coins. Yeah. Just the what? Challenge coins. Um, so we didn't budget anything in this current year for the art board? I don't. They budgeted don't it, Commissioner Caruso. Nothing has been spent, and it's probably because of COVID, because they usually do like a school year, like in the spring here at City Hall. <laughs> Uh, they have a big event at, at the springtime and probably yeah I know I've been to it um, so I would suggest reducing that 8440 to 2000 well they spent over 2000 previously I don't mind reducing it to 5000 give them a little bit of well, the reason the reason why I'm saying reduce to 2000 is because I don't see October November December us opening COVID-wise, um, and having those events, as you had mentioned, that may be the cost. So if they spent $2,142 in 2019, um, they've spent nothing in 2020, which they had well over seven months, six months to do. I don't see why going back to 2000 uh, wouldn't help. Their request in the current year was eighty four forty as well. So the request for the current year is the eighty four forty. Um, I, I, you want commissioner? Um, I'm sorry, vice mayor is looking to reduce it to five thousand. Commissioner Carasone is looking to reduce it down to two thousand. Um, commissioner Emmerich, do you want to weigh in? On, on this subject, yeah, I would go. Uh... You know, three thousand four hundred. That would reduce it by five thousand. But even if you cut it in half, it takes it to four twenty-two. You know, I, I mean, I can compromise. Yeah. You know, they have spent more than two, but I don't think they need very much more. So. And and I read their meeting that they're coming up, and they are going to be discussing what to do as far as a uh, call to artists that cost money. You know, to advertise uh, the the hanging of the students art working with the high school so they've got some things on their agenda that they want to address so i don't want to strip them mm -hmm. so i don't mind taking it you know half cutting it in half to four thousand two hundred and twenty commissioner uh, hanks do you want to weigh in so then we can get a consensus yeah no i think uh, what commissioner luke is saying uh, actually I want to combine you need two. to turn your mic on please get the ball in the head jonathan says he's gonna throw a ball at me <laughs> uh Anyways, uh, what was I saying? Uh, what would you uh, yeah, like? What What is your um, oh, yeah. thoughts so, on the amount? Mm -hmm. So I agree with cutting in half. I don't want to go all the way down. I think what Commissioner uh, uh, Carasone said is accurate. I, you know, I think over the next few months we probably won't be doing much of anything. So I think we can cut it back. But as Commissioner Luke said, there are some things coming up that uh, I don't want them to be hamstrung by. Uh, you know, they ought to be able to pay for. 
So, uh, so I'd like to find that compromise too. And I think right, right down the middle is a perfect uh, split. So let's get a consensus to have uh, this art advisory board fund request reduced to four thousand two hundred dollars. Four thousand two hundred and twenty. It cuts it straight in half. Okay, four thousand two hundred and twenty. I'm a yes. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Carousel? Yes. And Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. And I also am a yes. So we're going to reduce that to 4220. All right. Commissioner Carousel, are you finished or do you have anything else? Um, I, thought I, had, I thought I had one more thing and I thought it had to do with cards or something. I got to find it now. Um, the various printed cards at $1,780, that just seems like a lot of money. And I guess I don't see the actuals on that. Are you talking about business cards? I, it just says various printed cards. In the There's a separate area for Christmas cards, so. We'll ask Ms. Becky or Ms. Heather to weigh in on what that means. And maybe finance can see what we spent last year for that particular item. Go ahead, Ms. Heather or Ms. Becky. It's under the 4,700 category. Becky can respond to that. She has her book there. Thank you. That's the various cards for commission to send out to employees. Oh, so that's birthday cards and such. Yes. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about that. Because I didn't know there was money in that budget. So the birthday cards is been expended by myself. And I have no problem with that. It's not an issue for me because I find sending out the birthday cards to be important. But I didn't know there was funding for it. And where is it just birthday cards or is it Christmas cards? Okay, Christmas cards, birthday cards. Thank you. Um, that can definitely be reduced to just cover the costs of the uh, Christmas cards. Uh -oh. We need to find out what was expended. In Christmas cards were $105.48. So let's reduce that down to $200. Well, hold on a second, because we have birthday cards, don't we? Or were they all used? We don't have birthday cards, ma'am. I get them every month. We had them. We had stacks of them, boxes of them. I'm sure those are all expended. Oh, no, you're getting them. How much was spent know, last year, Lisa, and the year before, please? And I know there's a lot of charges in these accounts. You're yeah. going to have to hold on. I got to look through everyone. No every problem. One. I just don't want it be stripped to two hundred dollars and it be far less. Just in, well, just in case something else. Exactly, because we've talked about sending cards for sympathy cards to our advisory boards. You know, um, those types of things too. So. Any type of correspondent card, I think, needs to be come out of this. No, I, I don't do mind business? adjusting. No, not at all. Miss Becky, where do business cards come out From of? the same area. Same one. And okay, same so account. business cards is also printed cards. Okay, well, we definitely need to keep business card costs in there because we have a whole new commission coming in November and change of and stuff like that. So I, I was unaware of that being part of it. So obviously the 200 ideas out the window. Um, I thought the business cards came out of like other printing. <laughs> so Becky, can you tell us what was um, projected for the amount last year? Was it? Also, seventeen eighty for last year was that the request? Yes, it so didn't change. Didn't change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something tells me there's a reason why it was seventeen eighty and has been. 
Well, but, I'm going to just leave it alone because uh, if this is where the birthday cards and all the other uh, cards come out of and then on top of that, the um, the cards for the new commissioners, I'll, I think that that's probably an accurate amount. So since it didn't really detail what it was, that's fine. I'm good with it also. So am I. So we'll leave that alone. Do you have anything else, Commissioner Carousel? I don't know what the heck printed envelopes are, to be honest with you. It's the envelopes that have your return address reprinted on it. How often? Okay. Every two years. Never use. Yeah, it's every couple of years. Uh, okay. Is it in there every year? Mm hmm Yep, it's in I've never used them, so I wouldn't even know. There is some right, well, sitting I'm... in my office from Tom Jones when he used to sit in that <laughs> office, and I think maybe I've used two <laughs> in three years. So, can, can I we? I think get rid of it for this year. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, can. I'm alright with that. It's the two hundred and thirty dollars. If I'm looking correctly, it's two hundred and thirty dollars. Let's get a consensus to remove that two hundred and thirty dollars for printed envelopes. Commissioner Carasone? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Uh, all are yes. Uh, Vice Mayor? Uh, I'm a yes at making this zero, but leaving the line item in. So in the future years, if the supply needs to be uh, enhanced, exactly, then you've got that line item. But I am a yes for making it zero this year. And Commissioner Hanks? I agree with Commissioner Luke. We need to leave the line item, but go ahead and take the money out. And I also am a yes. So you have your consensus to remove $230, keeping that line for future reference in case we need it. Anything else, Commissioner Carson? I'm uh, looking, 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 looking. I think that's all I got highlighted. Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Emmerich, your floor. Yeah, um, this is an election year. And we also know, and this goes back to salaries, and we know for a fact that we're going to have two new commissioners up here. When they come on board, their salaries would be at the lower rate, or would it be with like what everybody else is making up here with the raises? Same. Yeah, the same. I, I'm sorry. I haven't looked at how it's that's same. calculated. Yeah. Our yes. salaries are the same regardless if you've been here four right. years or if you've right. been here two years. We all get paid the exact same amount. Okay, that's what I'm asking. So if we're making $5, they're going to come on board making $5. Five, five dollars. They wouldn't come on board making $3 because they haven't gotten any raises. But their, their yearly amount wouldn't total yours because you've been in the full term. They're only partial. Yeah, they're coming in November, whereas our salary... Right, I'm just trying to figure out the the calculations for that. So everybody, no matter what, each year gets paid the same, yes. whether they've been here for two years, one year, or four years. Okay, that's all I needed. I just want a clarification on that. Commissioner Amber, just clarification on that. Um, so the sitting mayor gets a hundred dollars extra a month. No, I understand that. Okay. I was just talking about time. Yeah, I just to let you know, not everybody makes the amount of your mayor. So. I just want time to know spent that. the commissioner care zone's really raking it in. <laughs> uh, I I would like to bring up under Vice the Mayor, go ahead. under the forty four hundred uh, the rentals for the poinsettia parade. Do do we want to leave that at a thousand dollars? I mean, it looks like it's the line item just for the parade, unless there's something else in that. That is only the rentals for the parade. And I believe uh, Caddy Carts gave them to us free this past year or so, didn't they? No. Who are they being ordered from and how much? Um, it's been Caddy Carts and it's been at $1,000. I believe it was nine eighty dollars something. So it is being expended at that, okay. I used to pay 50 bucks. 
Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. But um, last year, I don't think we used them. I think we were all on the float. I don't think we yeah, had last rental. year was the float. The year it before was that. the year before we had the carts and we decorated them up. But last year we were all on a float. So it all depends on what we're going to do this mm -hmm. year. If we're going to be on a float, then we don't need to have that line item budgeted because we won't be needing the carts. Well, so. who provided the float? Because there would probably the be city did. We, it was didn't utilities. Some, I think, it was, some I think yeah, volunteers from utilities after hours put it together, and then we were all on it. Remember, everybody was jamming right. up there, and we walked by it, and we gave out candy. And I tried to forget the image, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I remember that, and we were all together as a commission on that one float. I think was great because it helped the progression of the. Rather than being in different all. carts, yes. So I mean, minutes. if if y'all don't think. You know, we need them. I mean, I enjoyed doing that, or we can just walk. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but it's up to the board on what they want to decide with rentals or whatever for Christmas. Yeah, and I don't know if the staff has had that discussion, if we're going to still be floated or if we're going to be in, in, um, in, in golf carts. So, um, Was there a charge, no, he, Becky? Was there a charge to us? Commissioner Carson, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Is there a charge to us last year for the float? No. Okay. Go ahead, Commissioner Carson. I think you're going to have to keep this in. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the area, but just for the point of set up parade, because regardless of it being a float or renting golf carts, you're still going to have some sort of a cost allocated to it. And so I would be willing to leave it in there and maybe just keep it for, um, you know, just refer it to cost of point set of parade, whatever it may be. Because last year's was done due to the anniversary. And, you know, there were departments that spent money on it. And I don't think it's fair for them to continue to spend money on it. Could we possibly change the name and not just make it pointed toward the poinsettia parade, but citywide events? I mean, rentals for citywide events. That way it opens it up to anything that we might do for the Braves or for an anniversary, the poinsettia, uh, whatever. If we widened it, then you've got that $1,000 sitting there for any of those expenses. You want a consensus for that, Vice Mayor? Sure. Changing. Well, isn't that under pro, uh, promotional then? Isn't that then under promotional activity? Well, this is uh, under the 4,400 rentals and leases. So if you just expand it saying rentals for citywide events, it leaves you that $1,000 in there and you can use it for any of the events. Well, I think it has to go into a different line item then. It's not really a rental or lease because what I was trying to get at is if you're going to use it for <clears throat> decoration for the poinsettia parade or candy or um, if you have to rent a tent, you see what I mean? Like I would be more willing to just put it in promotional activities, uh, miscellaneous promotional activities at a thousand dollars and then that leaves it very open so you can use it for rentals as well as just decorations of a float or something that has to do with the brave i i understand where you're going but i believe there is a difference between the rental and the promotions uh that would have to be a question to ask to finance if there is a difference between those line items of there is if, but if you wanted to move it to buying candy or something next year, we just transfer it from one operating just account to the other. Just transfer it from the rentals down mm -hmm. to the promotion. Mm -hmm. But if we wanted to rent something, could we rent it out of promotions? No, you would pay for it out of this account. The out of the rental account. Yeah. I think we need to keep it where it is. Um, that way then we have funding if we need to rent anything for any of these activities. Um, I think that's a specific item in the budget of rental. And then the promotional activities is when we are doing an activity to promote, very much similar to the Art Advisory Board, the Challenge Coins, um, 
and the flowers and decorations for city events. Those are, that's the actual event that we're spending money on for promote promotion. Um, I'm, I'm more for leaving the thousand dollars in the rental. I'll go with that. All right, uh, Commissioner Hanks, are you okay to keep it the way it is? Yes, I'm fine. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much. Are we changing it from Poinsettia Parade to citywide events, though, under rentals? Would it specifically have to be used for Poinsettia because it says Poinsettia? No. No. Okay, thank you. Anybody, uh, Vice Mayor, I think, yeah, I think it was your floor, so go ahead. No, I just spoke to that, so anybody else, I'm done. Okay. Commissioner Emmerich, I just want to make sure you're finished. No, I was finished. Okay. Um, I do have one. Please don't laugh. I can't I'll promise. laugh ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't promise. Um, line 4800, the challenge coins for 1720. Here we are almost the end of July. We're not here in August. We don't have these challenge coins yet. Um, I just want to see if maybe we can remove the 1720 um, for not the I, not the line. Keep it in there as a zero because that way then they'll remember to put it in the budget for next year. But we haven't gotten the coins yet. Can't, you know, shell them out. So why budget? They're going to be sitting there. Why budget for more? You know, I just, this is for October first. I understand, Mayor. but you, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I hear a voice. It, it's city clerk. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, city clerk. We did purchase them for this year. We haven't passed them out because we haven't approved the policy on them. Um, so it would be whether or not y'all want to wait until after November to pass them out for the year, and then we won't need to budget them again. That's for this year. Where I was going. Yes. We have them. We haven't passed yes. them out. So I'm glad to hear that they came in. I didn't know they were here. Um, so I'm inclined to remove the 1720 for next fiscal year because we have them for next fiscal year already in this fiscal year. So um, just kind of want to get some feedback on that, removing the 1720. Uh, could I pose a question to the clerk? Yeah. Uh, city clerk, uh, what was the appropriation of 1720? I mean, what amount or, I mean, because we were talking about replacing as they were utilized. So how we, many coins does 1720 give you? It was um, 100 coins for each commissioner, 50 of each style. There was two right. styles, and they would be replaced each year, each November. But, um, but only the ones that uh, that were used, correct? I mean, you're not going yes, to buy Yes, no, at the end of, um, it has what the direction of commission was, at the end of a term of a commissioner, they were to um, return any of their unused ones. It doesn't, it didn't say if you only use 50 this year, you get 50 next year. It was 100 per year for each commissioner. And at the end of their term, they re re returned all unused ones. So what I'm asking is 1720, that replaces every single coin? That's for a hundred coins for each commissioner per year. Well, I think it'd be cut to um, cut the price. I don't think we're gonna be using all of them with, I mean, by the, by the end of this year. But I think there's going to have to be a replacement. So I don't mind lowering it, but I don't want it zero. Cut it by a thousand. I I can agree to that. I didn't hear what she said. Cut it by a thousand. You had well, Commissioner Emmerich. Commissioner Emmerich. Right, and uh, since we're not even starting until this year, you know, the new budget year, which will be all of next year. You wouldn't be looking at replacing them until the following budget. So this could even be something that we could cut now and then revisit next year's budget. And I would leave the line item, but I would definitely cut out the whole 1700 Exactly what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. That's what, 
she was saying. That, that's what she was saying, but I don't know when that process is going to be brought back to be finalized. I wouldn't think that it would take very long for it. And It's on the um, July 28th meeting. Okay, and when it's approved, I don't have a problem with it being enacted at that point where we have some commissioners who will be leaving that probably will hand some out that would have to be replaced. So that's why I'm leaning more to cutting it by the thousand and then replacing what uh, a couple of commissioners might be handing out by the end of their term. And, and I can agree with that, but what I was hearing earlier was they weren't even looking at starting the process until we had new commissioners. Now, with that given, if we're going to utilize them now, then yes, next year some would have to be replaced. I so that's so. where we need to work as a board to figure out the displacement of them, the timing of it, and, and where we're going to be at. So if we're going to start now, then yes, there's replacement costs. So maybe half the amount. Personally, myself, um, if it's a program, you have the product for the program, you enact it when you know it is stated. Putting it off until the, the new commission arrives, that even puts it into next year, uh, even past the October 1st mark, I mean, almost by two months. And I think it's unfair uh, to those who would be leaving that they not be able to participate in something that they help to bring about. That's my personal opinion. No, I, I, I agree with you. Why don't we just keep it in there? And if we don't use it, then it goes back into fund balance. I've heard that phrase a lot tonight. And we're, we're talking about um, small amounts, and I'm all for cutting small amounts, but we don't know even if we can order just a hundred, I don't know if there's minimum <coughs> orders or anything like that. Um, I would be more inclined to just keep it in there and just leave it alone. As much I, as I don't like. <laughs> actually, no, and I understand. I was just trying to come up with a compromise on on what was workable. You were, you, and, and I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but you were talking about cutting a thousand dollars here and a thousand. It no, does. No. It does all add up. It's so I, I have no issues with cutting some to add to that pot because every little bit, hey, we, we figured out a calculation earlier that we saved $6. Well, if we're looking at a tax increase right now with the fire, and that's $12, we just cut that tax increase in, in half yeah. by saving that $6. Yeah. So I'm all for adding up the little pieces of the pie to get a decent slice. I agree, so I'm, I'm for Let's cutting it by 1000 you want to keep 780 I'm sorry 720 dollars in that fund I would like a, I would like a consensus for that taking a thousand out leaving 720 for next year please or replacements type yes. things. all right so leaving 720 dollars in the challenge coins Commissioner Emmerich yes um, yes the vice mayor is yes. Commissioner Hanks again I probably would have been for pulling it all out because I don't think we're going to need it but uh in essence of uh, having a, a uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> having a consensus. Consensus was the word on. Yes. Commissioner Carison? Uh, yes. Thank you. Anything else? I did have one more. Go ahead, I'm Commissioner sorry. Carison. It was under books and subscriptions, and I see that we have $300 for this for the Florida statutes, a set of them. I've never seen them. And I don't think any of us has ever used them as they're all online. So is there a reason why we need that in there? I think we, I think we have to keep a paper copy in house and they're, they're over here in the back of chambers. I think we have to keep a current copy. I don't know, city attorney. To my knowledge. Book. I don't know. I'm I'm asking them to weigh in. Um, I've never heard that. Um, we don't buy any books in our legal budget. The reason she probably hasn't seen them is they're in her office somewhere. So I assure no, they you, are they are not in my office. Not yours, but Commissioner Carazones. Everything else is in there. 
I, I know we, we come back to this uh, this topic of these each year, and I always push back a little bit uh, because I think keeping updated with some of the subscriptions and stuff like that uh, is is worthy of the position. But I am for taking it out this year. Uh, I've been able to obtain free prescriptions prescriptions, subscriptions oh. <laughs> to some of uh, some of the publishing. So I would rather continue with those freebies than to pay for a subscri or, yeah, subscription. Yes. So this is just for the state statutes. This is for state statutes. Book. Well, I'm talking about the whole topic of the other all subscriptions. Gotcha. Thank you. So, uh, Vice uh, Commissioner Carison, do you want to get consensus to remove the $300 for Florida statutes one set? Please, yes. Uh, Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes, as long as it's not a legal requirement, absolutely. Thank you, and I also am a yes. And I'm a ditto to Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Yep. Yep. So we... Okay. we I heard city attorney say there wasn't a legal prohibition to removing it, so I'm all for it, absolutely. All right, anything else, guys? Where's the other subscriptions that there are? Uh, it's just uh, FLC and Minnesota League and NLC. We cut other subscriptions a long time ago. Oh, yeah. No wonder I'm getting freebies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anything else, guys? All right, it is now 1230. What is the will of the board? Do you want to plug through, or do you guys want to take a 15-minute break and then come back and finish, or do you guys want to take lunch? Uh, I think if we're going to take a break, we just need to take lunch, yep. so that way staff can do it. If, yeah. if, if we're not, we put this through. Okay. So let's take and come back at 115. That'll give us just over half hour, minutes. almost 45 minutes. Will that work, city? Manager? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank so you. we are adjourned for lunch until 1.15. Thank you very much. I just wanted to thank Commissioner Luke. That was a long seven minutes. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>
the weather and everything, so I look at the bridge rating and all that. And that should be it. I'll just come back and clean them off. Building Division is responsible for making sure that all the codes that the state has adopted in construction is adhered to. And basically what we do is we look at, we go and do our plan reviews when a customer brings a set of plans in that they want to construct a commercial project or a residential project. We'll review the plans to make sure that they comply with all amenable codes that the state has adopted. After we issue the permit, then we'll go out and do all the inspections and make sure that they are constructed according to the plans. We're responsible for the uh, safe construction of all these buildings and we look at all aspects of the construction from footings, foundations, uh, block walls, to roof construction, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, in both commercial and residential. So when we have a commercial project that comes in, we're looking at all aspects of that to make sure that it is a safe environment to, and it would have to be designed to withstand the 160 mile an hour wind criteria that the state has mandated that we look at. Our job is life safety, just making sure that the building is constructed in a safe manner that it will stand the hurricane design wind loads that we have down here. And uh, that's what our job is, is to make sure people are safe in their buildings, that they can walk into their building knowing that Northport has done the best possible job we can to make sure that their, their building is constructed in a manner that they feel safe in, they can go home in. The Planning and Zoning Division is responsible for all development management of the City of Northport, large-scale commercial developments, residential developments. The City of Northport's Planning and Zoning Division is divided into two separate uh, sections. One is the Strategic Planning Group and the other is the Tactical Planning Group. The Strategic Planning Group is responsible for development management through the preparing and updating of our comprehensive plan, its amendments, all the annexations, and reviewing development of regional impacts and zoning applications. The Strategic Planning Group is also responsible for updating our demographics, population projections, and land use data through GIS, and also maintain our land use and zoning maps. The tactical side of the office is responsible for maintaining the Unified Land Development Code, ensuring all development proposals that are submitted to the city are consistent and in compliance with ULDC, all of our master plans, our pattern books, zoning requirements, and the city's comprehensive plan. Tactical Operations also helps coordinate all development proposals through the city departments, the division, and external agencies through our staff development review process managing development's appearance, their architecture, traffic impacts, fiscal impacts, compliance to signage, landscape, and other development management requirements. We work closely with utilities, building, and public works. We also manage the environmental compliance issues on site development. The Property Standards Division is what's otherwise known as code enforcement in other municipalities. We are located on the first floor of City Hall our job is to assure the health, safety, and welfare of our residents and insist in maintaining the community standards. We enforce the Unified Land Development Code, the Northport City Code, and the Florida Building Code. The Northport City Code would be like grass and weeds. That's one of our major violations, especially in the summer. Uh, Unified Land Development Code would be like the number of vehicles on a property. Uh, Florida Building Code would be someone building something like a shed or something like that on the property without a permit. The purpose of code enforcement is to make sure that everything's safe in the communities, to make sure that everything's being built properly with the proper permits, to make sure that basically everything looks nice. If someone has an issue with a neighbor or a house that they drive by, they do have the option to contact property standards through phone, fax, or on North Report.
what's it like? Undescribable. Um, the only word I was using is Armageddon. Um, sheer loss, destruction, um, not just wood frame homes. These are concrete structures that are destroyed. Just the compassion that I am thankful that as a crew in, in Northport, we could give them. I mean, if we weren't putting out fires or if we weren't um, finding people to save, it was simply giving them a hug, um, helping them get some of the furniture out of their house, assisting them with a ladder to the second story because maybe the stairs were wiped out, uh, climbing up in there and, and getting that little piece of home that they wanted back so badly and able to give it to them, and then just listen to their story and, and, their, and, and hear their, about their loss. personal safety for my family, I will not ride out a storm again. I will not take that chance. Um, if I see it coming up the gulf towards our city, uh, my family's going to get out. Getting home is unbelievable. So thankful to be home, that my family is safe, to be back here, where this, this simple creature comforts are back at home to have those things back and normal meals. Unbelievable what we saw there, the loss that we saw there and destruction there.
Frank Lamas, Always Manager for the City of Northport. Uh, we're here today to talk about three recycling tips. The first one is plastic bags. Now, plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. So let's talk about some of the plastic bags. Grocery bags, okay, they're very important. We see them inside the blue lid container quite often. They need to return back to the grocery stores. And that would be your Publix, your Walmarts, your Targets. Please return them back there. Do not place recyclable uh, items inside these bags. Tie them and place them in the blue lid tote. If it goes down to the processor, it is called contaminant. It's contaminated and they will not accept it. So please, keep the grocery bags outside. Now remember, it's not just grocery bags. Okay, we're talking about bread bags, lunch bags, uh, big plastic garbage bags that fill the recyclables. And we have one right here to show you. And I'll go ahead and show you. This is what we find out there. This right here is contaminated. All this clean recyclable is contaminated because it's inside a plastic bag. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have any questions about recycling materials or how to recycle, place it in the comment below and we will try to get to you in a future video. Frank Lamas, always manager for the city of Northport, back here again today with you for Let's Recycle Right Northport. So, couple of things, we have an aluminum can and a straw. Now the aluminum can right here, 500 million are consumed each day. This is the most valuable recycling item you can see out there in the world today. Let's talk about the plastic straw, okay? The plastic straw, 500 million are used each day. This is not a recyclable item right here in Northport. That's right, even though it's plastic, don't let it fool you. Just because it's plastic, it is not a recyclable material right here inside our program. Now the aluminum can, yes, that is a recyclable item right here in Northport. And Lana, thank you very much for your comment and question. And the question was about plastic bags, uh, water bags, salt bags. These are not a recyclable item right here in Northport. These belong in your trash, please. They belong in the trash, they do not belong in the blue lid container. Bleach bottles, that's right, bleach bottles are a recyclable material right here in Northport, a number two. They belong in the blue lid container. The only thing you'll have to do is make sure they're empty, clean, and dry. If you have any more of the questions or comments, please place them below and we'll get to you in the next video. Thank you very much. What makes this place so special is, is the people. Um, the, the community who you serve and the people who you work with. Our mission statement is to provide the community with the elite law enforcement services out there with the highest priority being the protection of life and property. We work 24-7, holidays, uh, there's no time off. Uh, our agency is rapidly growing. We have a, um, a detective bureau, we have a traffic unit, uh, we have a full crime scene unit. Northport PD is an accredited agency. Actually, we're double Excelsior accredited, which is we are one of 14, I believe, other agencies in the state of Florida that have reached that double Excelsior credit. It's a very prestigious uh, accomplishment to have. Most of the people only see uh, the police officers in uniforms out there doing the day-to-day -day tasks, but they can't do that alone. In the background, what people don't see a lot is the support staff here at Norport Police Department. We go from very high density areas to very rural areas uh, throughout the city. The challenge that Northport Police Department is facing right now is the rapid growth in the city of Northport um, and trying to keep up with those levels of service. Law enforcement officers wear many different hats, um, but at the end of the day, it's their, their problem solvers. Um, they're there for you 24 seven 
uh, and the, their, their importance of all of our officers that we stress to is to go home safe at night. The Administration Division of Public Works does a variety of different tasks. Uh, the main one is our Customer Service Division. They answer several hundred phone calls a day, ranging from solid waste questions to uh, water drainage questions on a day like today. Also, we have a uh, Budget Finance Administration Division that handles accounts payable, uh, accounts receivable, and budget. The Northport Public Works Department also has a technical section that handles GIS, mapping, and um, also our work order system. In the engineering division, we analyze any drainage issues that the city might have, water control structures. We're also in charge of all the roadways. The roadways include design for multi-use trails, sidewalks. The city has been experiencing tremendous growth. The biggest project that we have right now is called the Price Boulevard Whitening. That road is a two-lane road. Capacity for that two-lane road is about 17,000 vehicles per day. Uh, our latest numbers for that show that currently there are 21,700 vehicles traveling every day, meaning it's way over capacity. Engineering also is in charge of uh, revising new development. When uh, a new gas station comes, uh, a new hotel or building, they submit plans to us. So it's our responsibility to check that they comply with water treatment, the drainage that they got to design the pond and the piping and everything is per code and standards. I have one professional engineer that takes care of all the uh, roadway design. Then I have a stormwater manager and then we have a group of inspectors they inspect uh, when there's a new house being built they got to inspect the, the driveway the culvert pipe and making sure that it's set up at the right elevation to provide positive flow they also inspect the roadways on the through the road bond they inspect uh, to see that the correct thickness of pavement is being applied also the water control structure when it gets into construction we have our own inspector that go and make sure that the project is being built per the plans and specifications Fleet Division, we have uh, over 600 vehicles and equipment that we maintain. I've got seven mechanics, shop supervisor, two staff assistants, and a fleet asset technician that um, we do everything from cradle to grave for all of our vehicles and uh, equipment. So we order the equipment, maintain the equipment, and ultimately dispose of the equipment. We do everything from weed eaters to all the way to airboats to solid waste vehicles, grapple trucks, uh, the solid waste trucks, fire, fire engines, ambulances, police cars. The entire fleet of the city. Well, we're able to maintain all of our own vehicles. That's the biggest thing. So all of our mechanics have a relationship, if you will, with these vehicles. They know the, in, the nuances of all the vehicles. Uh, it makes it easy for our departments to come and see us. We, we, you know, we're an on-site facility for them, so they don't they don't necessarily have to schedule safety-related issues. They can come directly to us. Um, the city fleet maintenance also carries 44,000 gallons of fuel that we maintain our vehicles with as well. We've got over 200 years of mechanics experience among them so we've got gentlemen who have been here for over 30 years and we've got guys who have been here for just over a year. Public Works Operations Department currently has 71 employees. Of that 71 employees were divided into two sections which is roadway and drainage. Our roadway section takes care of the over 800 miles of roadway. Of striping, pothole repairs, all of that is handled by the road section. 
In the roadway section, we, we maintain all of the street signs, uh, install, replace, we maintain all of the traffic signals. We have 19 traffic signals that we maintain in the city, uh, as well as mowing all the right-of-ways, the vertical mowing to push back the uh, impinging vegetation out of the right-of-ways. In that division, we also have the waterway crew that handles all of our aquatic spraying. We have two crews that go out in airboats that spray those waterways to keep the vegetation down. We also have crews that operate all our water control structures. We have 23 gated water control structures that facilitate the movement of the stormwater through the city during storm events uh, and even just our typical rainy season. Then we have our drainage section. It maintains all of our roadside swales, our retention ditches, and all of our pipe installs, our catch basin installs, uh, anything that, that has to do with getting the water from the properties or the roadways into the secondary drainage, which is our retention ditches, and into our canals. Our mission is to ensure the safety and health of our citizens through the proper and efficient collection and disposal of all solid waste. We collect uh, over 30,000 residents here in the city. Garbage, garbage bulk, yard waste, uh, yard waste bulk, uh, recycling, also metal. This year, we're probably gonna do about 600 tons more of recyclable material over the last year. So that's pretty awesome. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, myself, I've been here 18 years. And when I first started here at the Solid Waste Division, there was only about 15 people. And right now, we have grown, as the city grows, so have we, uh, we're up to 39 people and employees. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. We also collect from our commercial accounts. We collect dumpsters and roll-offs and from businesses and organizations, and it's starting to really pick up also. Uh, we have about three, over 350 accounts right now, and some of those accounts go maybe three, four, five times a week. Uh, we get 3,300 service requests a month for bulk of garbage and collection. We have some good, good people that work here, so really care about the community. Remember, if you have any questions at, at any time, you can always just give us a call at 941-240-8050. Give us a call, customer service. We'll gladly help you with any questions. Many times, Crisis can't be avoided. A family's car will accidentally break down while their electric bill is due. A health emergency will arise just as it's time to pay the rent. It's a reality that so many people face. What makes the City of Northport unique is that it offers a way to help. The City of Northport Social Services Division connects the public with valuable resources to improve their overall quality of life, especially in unexpected times of hardship. As part of the City Manager's Office, the Social Services Division's mission is to ensure the availability, awareness, and accessibility of programs and resources in the community, and to assist families and individuals while improving their overall quality of life. With five staff members, including a manager, two full-time caseworkers, a staff assistant one, and a staff assistant two, the Social Services Division assists Northport households experiencing a short-term, unavoidable crisis with financial assistance. Staff can assist with rent or mortgage, utilities, and more. In addition, staff will connect families and individuals with available community resources. The Social Services Division also oversees the City of Northport's Family Service Center and the Community Education Center, located on Pan American Boulevard. Both the Family Service Center and the Community Education Center house a variety of nonprofit and government agencies that provide aid to residents. Located on a campus that includes the Sarasota County Health Department and Children's First, this one-stop location offers a variety of resources that residents would otherwise have to travel outside the city to access. The offices of the Social Services Division are busy. Every Monday morning, Northport residents visit the Social Services Division for what is known as pre-screen Mondays. Clients can meet with a caseworker who gathers basic information about their current situation. From there, referrals and appointments are made to further assist the Northport household. In addition to assisting with rent, mortgage, or utilities, the Social Services Division also is an intake location for families and individuals experiencing homelessness. 
The division is a one-by-one -one coordinated intake access point. This is a system that has been created to identify eligible resources and connect clients with the appropriate assistance regarding their situation. Outside of their daily operations, the Social Services Division hosts events in the community designed to further connect the public with area resources. Every April, the Division works with the Healthy Start of Sarasota County to host a community baby shower and preschool expo. This event features businesses and community agencies that offer information and services for parents of both toddlers and newborns. The Division also hosts a back-to-school resource fair every August to provide school-aged children supplemental school supplies and backpacks. The fair features exhibitors that provide services for parents with school-aged children. During the holidays, Social Services hosts an annual Home for the Holidays program. This program has two parts, a senior giving tree and adopt and shop. In both cases, seniors and parents register with social services and are adopted by individuals, businesses, and organizations who help provide a holiday experience. Many city departments will adopt families or seniors through this program. Ask your supervisor how you can get involved. There are many other ways that you can help through the Social Services Division. City employees are invited to volunteer time or donate resources. Donations can come in the form of gift cards to gas stations or grocery stores. Monetary donations are also accepted. The Social Services Division and Northport Utilities work together to offer an H2O program in which monetary donations are used to assist Northport households to pay their Northport Utilities bills. Social Services also works with Parks and Recreation to facilitate a youth scholarship program so that our local youth can participate in programs offered by the Parks and Recreation Department. The Social Services Division makes a difference in the lives of Northport residents every day through the services that they provide. If you or someone you know are in a short-term crisis and need assistance, contact the Social Services Division. They are here to help. The Utilities Department is in charge of all water and wastewater services for the City of Northport. We currently serve 17,000 sewer customers and 22,000 water customers throughout the city. The Utilities is comprised of five different divisions. We have our Administration Division, Engineering, Field Operations, our Water Treatment Plant, and our Wastewater Plant. Our administration division has two locations. One is the admin office and field office over on West Price Boulevard next to the high school. Or the other office is our cashiering and customer care office and that is located on the first floor of City Hall. Our engineering division, they oversee all of the utilities projects, uh, new development going in, infrastructure inspections, everything that the city has in the ground has to be located for new construction. Also in the field office on Price Boulevard is our field operations division. They are in charge of maintaining everything out in the distribution and the collection system. They're the ones that do all the new service installations. Anytime there is a break or a repair, they're the ones that respond to that. And we have field operations staff um, available and on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our meter readers are part of our field operations division and those meter readers read every single one of our 22,000 water meters every single month. Our wastewater treatment plant is located on Pan American Boulevard and that plant basically treats yeah, I mean, all wastewater uh, sewer water for counter attacks. <laughs> and what we do there is we take all that incoming sewage and we treat it to uh, produce reclaimed water. The reclaimed water is pumped out to Hello. Hi, it's Ida. Are you there? I'm here. Okay, I'm going to mute you for a minute, okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Those are the birthday cards.
Inter oh, city attorney's not here. I think we have to. Okay, are we ready, guys? Ready. Welcome back. Hope everybody enjoyed their lunch. It's now 1.16. Just for the record, Commissioner Carison, can you hear us? I'm here. Thank you. And City Clerk, Ms. Heather, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. All right, City Manager, moving on. Yes, ma'am, uh, <clears throat> uh, Madam Mayor. Um, with that, I guess we'll circle back uh, to city clerks, and I'll ask Mrs. Uh, Farrell to come up and uh, adjust it for slides, and then we'll turn it over to the city clerk. How about fun fact? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I tried to get a fun fact out of uh, Ms. Taylor, and she said, I'm not playing that today. I'm not going to give you a fun fact. No fun, fun fact, facts for no Ms. Heather. Fact. <laughs> One about her. Oh, good. I was say, it's time for us to make it up now. We'll there you go. We'll make them up as we go. Grandma. Yes, yeah, she is. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we made up our own fun fact. There you it's go. a very That's nice a one. one. Congratulations again on your new grandbaby. So we'll turn it Thank over you. to <laughs> We'll turn it over to you. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, for the city clerk, we're proposing an increase of $8,430 or 0.96%. Uh, there are 26,000 in budget proposals or 3%. And this is a visual of what those budget proposals are that we move forward with from the June workshops. There were no changes since the June workshops. Were there any questions on any of these? Mayor? Uh, commission, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ms. Heather. If I may, before you start with the questions, I wanted to recommend one change that I thought about then we're not going to need. And that would be the um, six thousand dollars for the, the additional six thousand dollars for extra visits for the records consultant, since he did not come during the COVID. Um, we have those days that we can carry over to next year. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear all of that. Are you at asking to reduce to remove? Add? Yeah, to to reduce the professional service other line item for SML income six thousand dollars. I'm sorry, Ms. Heather, is that a uh, proposal detail sheet or is it in the HTE? I do not have my documents here with me because I didn't plan on being at home. Um, if Laura is in there, she'll be able to tell you where you it's located. You don't really reduce that, do you, when you have a carryover? This was an extra $6,000 we were asking for because um, we were going to add three more days of him to come do maintenance next fiscal year, but because we didn't use those the days we already have and the funds we already have for this year, we don't need the extra days. We can carry the ones we currently have over. Yeah, and that's what I was getting at. I, I think so, it still has to be listed, even though I don't I don't so know how that's handled. Okay, hold on, guys. We've got way too many people talking at once. Um, staff is working with Miss Laura to get an answer on our multiple questions on that. Thank you, Miss Heather. Bear with us a minute. Just saying it's six thousand dollars within the professional services category. 
Yes, it's under 3105. Right. I'm so it would be on the same. 10. Right. It's on page 10. You need to come to the front and state your name, please, for the record. Laura Lee, Administrative Services Specialist for the City Court Department. Can you just get up the mic? Yeah, go closer to the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Laura Reed, Administrative Services Specialist for the City Clerk Department. The $6,000 Ms. Taylor is referencing is in the HTE. It is not a budget proposal. Okay. Vice Mayor, did that answer your question? Not really. Um, if it's not in a proposal and it's in a line item, in the HTE, that's not a new thing. And I don't expect you to really answer. I expect the clerk to answer that. Uh, I know you're it trying to cover for her, but if, if it's new and you are asking for something new, why isn't it in a budget proposal? Because it was already a current project that we were working on. We already have the records consultant project. I believe that's why um, we didn't have to submit a, a proposal for it. It was just an additional three days on top of that project that we currently have to do record maintenance for the upcoming fiscal year. We will track it down. If you had a one time addition to your budget, we would have removed that at the beginning. So we will double check and see if it is in there. If that was a one time expense and we, we're done with it. It should have already been removed if it hasn't. If we didn't use it yet. It's for this coming fiscal year. Three visits for this coming fiscal year. Are you saying it rolled forward? Was it a project? That no, rolled? we were asking. We we're asking for an additional six thousand dollars for three more visits from Matt for next fiscal year. Because we intended to use all of his visits that we currently have funded for this fiscal year, but we did not use them because of COVID. So we don't need additional ones if we carry over what we have. Right, if I understand correctly, you're just trying to carry over what you have in the current year so that you don't need next year's because you didn't use it this year. So it would be the same exactly. contract he's on now that you're trying to, that's rolling over into the next year. Yes. Yeah. So that shouldn't even really be showing then, correct? If she had used the three visits this year as she planned, yes. But she didn't. But she didn't, and she didn't know that at the time she put in her budget. Because that was pre-COVID, so she didn't know she wasn't going to use the visits in the current year. So now she's just going to use those next year, and she can delete the funding she had for it for next year. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can I get consensus to remove item number 40-00 from city clerk's budget for $6,000? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Carousel? Yes. And I also am a yes. Thank you very much for that, Ms. Ms. Heather. I appreciate that. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions for City Clerk? I do have one. I remember in, in June, we were talking about um, an employee that was going to be retiring in December. And you wanted to keep the, the position and that way then you would have it um, up until December. And I believe it was a staff assistant one position. Yes. <clears throat> And I don't know if we can do this, staff will have to help me. If we remove that staff assistant one position from this budget, could they use the money <clears throat> that's allocated for the deputy city clerk that is a vacant position right now? We aren't going to be filling it until at least after the election because of the referendum. So there is a savings in the deputy city clerk's um, salary that can pay for this staff assistant one up until the employee retires. That way then we would save approximately, I don't know, 30-ish thousand dollars. 
Yeah, I mean, so we be leave the positions, but we do a one-time reduction of salary budget. Certainly, we could do that. It does what? We leave the positions are still there to be filled and available, but we do a one-time reduction of the salary dollars associated with those two that are budgeted. Why yes, would we, we can do that. Why would we keep the position if we're getting rid of the position? I don't understand that. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. That. To start the year, we would keep them both in there. But then once the staff assistant retires, then that position will be deleted. Maybe we're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. What I'm what I am looking to do is keep the physical employee mm -hmm. using the funding for the deputy city clerk that is vacant now, mm -hmm. using that money in the deputy city clerk's salary to pay for the staff assistant one, removing the staff assistant one's salary. I, 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 both positions will be available, <clears throat> but the, the funding will come out. Yes. So we're gonna, still going to have a staff assistant one. So talking December. two different no, things. No, we are talking two okay. different things. I'm looking to get rid of staff assistant one. She doesn't want the line item for that position even in this budget. But I don't even want though you're going to be utilizing that position currently. I'm not looking to get rid of the staff assistant one as of October 1st. Wait until retirement date, whatever date that is, January or December. So maybe what it is is we'll keep the staff assistant one until January 1 removing the funding for it because we can use the savings for the deputy city clerk. Does that make sense? Yes. And then the staff assistant one goes away. Yes. The line item. Mm -hmm. we, well, you're, okay, yes. I can do it that way, yes. But you're still going to have both positions for three months of the year, even though your deputy clerk won't be filled, right? Right. And the one will, and then the one on January 1st or after retirement, that position, it disappears from the, from the city. So would we be taking all 12 months salary? I'm looking to take all 12 months salary for the staff assistant one mm -hmm. out of the budget. Okay. However y'all do that, yep. magic. I can do it. All right. Um, does anybody have any comment or weigh in on that? Um, idea that I was yeah I'm a little confused as to how you can do that because you those are two different positions and each of them having their own position and line item they're paid differently the pay scale is different so I don't know how you can eliminate the one position entirely get rid of all the money, but still have somebody sitting in the chair in that position and pay them from another position's line item. It's all coming from one, one account, one salary line item. So you've got a $100,000 employee and a $50,000 employee. So they make, the one makes twice as much every month as the other. Well, this one's vacant, so we're not spending that money for three months. So yes, if we took out everything for the $50,000 employee, there's still that vacancy money okay, available Okay, so they're, they're not line item then. Okay, it's just one pot for right. yep. employees. Okay, okay, then yes. you definitely can do it that way. What, what, line, what uh, line was that on? Well, there? it's actually 12-00. It was just something based on the discussion we had in June that I went, wait a minute, we, we can do it a different way. And I just wanted to see if it was okay. But does it change that line item too? I, it would reduce it by at least the 1200 I don't know what she makes. I would assume right. I'm, I'm pulling a number, $30,000, which then would change the very bottom line of seven sixty dollars probably to... I don't know, $42,000? I, I, I don't know. It's going to change uh, a bunch of the personnel accounts, mm -hmm. but yeah, it'll probably personnel altogether will go down about forty dollars to $50,000. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? City clerk, do you want to weigh in? If 
Vice Mayor is finished. Um, I have been working with the um, city manager as well as HR to um, to move that the task because um, Sue's main task is to answer the um, you know the main line to move that out of our department into another department. So we have been working on that. Um, the only concern with that was is it's kind of it's been questioned as to whether another department would have to hire somebody to take over that task. Um, but we are working on it and we've already started pushing, you know, some of Sue's tasks within our department and having the departments do more of their own stuff for meetings. So we have been working on it. So we're aware that it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I'm grateful that you do have that conversation coming up and you were speaking with the city manager in regards to it, because I do feel as though that's not a proper use of that position. Uh, and somebody answering the phone and working downstairs and stuff, that, that whole position probably needs to be reevaluated, in my opinion. So thank you for the conversation mm -hmm. for that. So anybody else want to weigh in before we get consensus? I have a question real quickly is just, you know, the impact of this, is there a negative impact doing this? I don't believe there isn't within our department. We've been able to um, transition a lot of the tasks, so. Okay. All right, so let's get a consensus to remove, that have finance work their magic to remove the staff assistant one position utilizing the excess funding for deputy city clerk's vacant position. And I don't know how that is actually phrased, but I think based on our conversation, you get the gist. All right. Can it be to remove the, pos the budget, not the position, right? Mm -hmm. So HR is not going to remove the position right now. We're going to remove the budget dollars. We're going to right. take the the money out mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Okay. I, yes. I hear the dis the differences. Thank you. So we're going to remove the funding for this staff position one entirely. Um, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Carrison? Yes. And I am a yes. So that's approximately a 40 to 45,000-ish savings in that department. Thank you. Anybody else have anything for city clerk's department? Um, I just have one on the budget in page 27. It's for a GovQA OCR implementation fee, and it's, I'm sorry, that's not it. Goodness sakes. Next page, 19, I'm sorry, 1497 on page 29. And it's a records management UCF training. I thought I heard in FLC classes somewhere that either the FLC or the state provides um, records management training. I, I heard it somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where. At no charge. Has they do. They provided very. They provide a very um, a, sh a brief um, training on records management. This is more of a um, in depth training for Becca for um, career progression um, and also succession planning for when um, our current records management staff member does retire. So is this educational reimbursement or no? It's um, we were just asking just for funding for the training, just staff training for Becca. Okay. All right, thank you. She, she served as Cynthia's backup as well. So with just the simple records management training that you go to, you just really kind of learn about the retention, not the more in depth that she would need to be able to provide if Cynthia were to be out for an extended period of time. Okay, appreciate that clarification. Thank you. All right, anybody else? 
Commissioner Carousel? Nope, I'm fine. Okay, I thought I heard you say something. All right, uh, City Clerk, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, that's all, thank you. All right, and I enjoyed your fun fact of being a new grandma. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> um, we will move on then to utilities. Yep, uh, Kim and Mrs. Farrell is gonna give a little uh, heads up uh, part of the presentation, but again, I reiterate, um, Mr. Newkirk is the scallop king. You want to know how to cook scallops? He's the expert on cooking them. Yeah, he's he's a world-renowned scallop chef. Wait, okay. Has, has a little bit to do with bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Put some more bacon on it. Um, so these slides that we're about to present will include utilities funds, sewer capacity fee, and water capacity fee funds. Um, so for this year, we are proposing an actual decrease of $9.3 million or 20%. And that is mostly due to the uh, $10 million for the new building that was in 1920 and the CIP. Um, but here is the base budget of $35 million, budget proposals of $1.381. And here is the breakdown of those budget proposals. This one's very busy, but a lot's going on. Um, the changes from the June workshops total 164000 and are detailed on this page. Are there any questions on utilities? Commissioner Hanks, do you have any questions? Commissioner Emmerich? Nope, I think they're doing a fine job. Thank you very much. Commissioner Carrison? No. And Vice Mayor? That is a busy pie chart. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you wow. get all the colors? Looks like the pizza I had for supper last night. <laughs> I hope not that purple section. <laughs> I'll tell you what, just making that pie chart with all those colors so it didn't blend all together, holy cow. <laughs> I do have a couple questions. Um, if you go to page 178 in the budget, and again, I apologize, I didn't catch this the last time. I had it marked to ask. And maybe I did, I just wanna double check. Page 178, it says here, it's in the water system in the utility revenue fund for $40,000 in expenditures. It, it looks peculiar, it stood out to me, and I just wanna make sure, is this admin, is it water, is it revenue, or is it expenses, because <laughs> it's... Which account number, I'm sorry. Page 178, yep, in the regular budget book, and it's called the 1502HBMP Triannual Report Preparation. Yes. I'm not sure what page number she's referring to. I believe that that will be the HBMP report. She said it was in. Which page number again did you say? On page 178. In the budget book, not in the HTE, ma'am. Just to be clear. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering why nobody could find it. I'm sorry. It's in the budget book, 178. Budget proposal 15, I believe. Yep. 1502. It is. Oh, that. Okay. okay, what was your question on that? I'm sorry, Mayor. So it says here it's for the water system, mm -hmm. but it's in the admin part. So we'll start with that. Should this not be in the water uh, part of your budget, or does it not matter? Um, yeah, it should be under the um, water plant. It, it, well, it's in here, but it's in the water plant. Let me look on the 
sun guard section. So yes, it is in uh, proposal 1502 is under the water division. I'm sorry, Jennifer DeRocher, Assistant Utilities Director. Um, and it is proposal 1502 shows in the um, water plant division. So I'm not sure how it ended up in the... Um, okay, because in, in my book, it's under the admin part of it. In, the, in my book, it's under admin, and I, it might be just misplaced in my book, and I just wanted to double check that. Can you show me in the HTE where it is, just for my own? So it's uh, in GovMax, um, the July 10th uh, printing on page 168. 168? Yes, ma'am. And that would be under which? Under professional services? Okay, I see. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's it's all good. It's 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 in there. Everything is okay. Yes, ma'am. It, Thank you very much for indulging me on that. No problem. It's probably just misplaced in my book. Could so, be. Yes. And that happens. I get it. The other question I have is in the in the budget book on page one ninety three. It's a reclassification of a class A operator to chief operator. Mm -hmm. So going to my little trusty vacant sheet, <laughs> um, it's in this proposal sheet, it's talking about meeting compliance, but we've had a chief water, or I'm sorry, wastewater operator vacancy since September that has been vacant for a very long time. It's, it's been filled with an interim um, chief operator right now. Uh, this all took place, you know, recently we just opened up the, the brand new wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. So um, in, as that plant was just coming online, um, that's not a 16 hour a day plant. We were able to get it reclassified as a six hour a day plant, um, but we had a class A operator um, standing in as the chief um, until we could get um, get get all this taken care of, and um, so um, that's tomorrow. I don't yes, um, interviews um, are scheduled for tomorrow to fill this position. The vacant position. Correct. So this reclassification is for. Another chief operator? We, well, we have two plants. Um, we need a chief operator at both of the facilities. Okay, so you've had so you've had an interim since that plant opened down in the West Villages area. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now I mm -hmm, understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I understand. I'm sorry. I thought that that was filled, and this was like a. I gotcha. We, if I may add to that too, we just have, um, I, I know you've heard in the past that um, operators are extremely hard to come by. And so therefore their, their supervisory level type of positions and, and uh, superintendent and chief positions are even that much harder to try to fill. Um, it's a very highly competitive field. So I appreciate that because I, I know how difficult it is to fill those. I. I Keep telling people that are looking to start careers, you better start looking at this because I'll tell you what, you'll be set for life. It is a great career. It is. <laughs> we'll, we'll, you can we'll, go we'll anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. Um, your water operator, let's talk about that because that's been vacant since June of last year. How many water operators do you guys have? This is really hard to read because of the blue, but... This is water on this side. <laughs> Want to borrow mine? Uh, <laughs> if the color scheme is a little hard to read through. We have seven. Seven water plant operators? Yes, ma'am. And then there's just that one vacancy? 
I believe we have two, we had two vacancies. Um, one we put out and never, um, just didn't, we're not able to hire anybody. Um, therefore, uh, so we changed that position to a trainee and we now have a trainee um, in that role right now. And hopefully by next year, they will have a, attained their C license at which time they'll be able to be a full-fledged operator. So are, are you saying that this position for water operator that's been vacant since June of last year, we can remove that or are we changing that to a trainee? Oh, no, ma'am. The, the trainees, the way that they're kind of in the budget is they are a trainee and then when they get their license, they are automatically changed to a, um, to a C level operator. And it's the same as if they, uh, if they go to a B operator or an A operator. As soon as they get their licensure change, um, per the contract, they go to the next uh, level. So would it be better to change it from a water operator? Because it sounds like you can hire trainees quicker than operators. Would it be better to change this vacant position to trainee? I mean, the problem is, is it takes, you know, a year to, to do that. And um, with the new plant coming online essentially next uh, summer, uh, because we will have to run it for approximately, you know, about six months before we actually take it over, um, we will need licensed operators. So we will be, um, yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, yeah. we just interviewed um, on the 20th for a water plant operator, and we have selected someone, and it is going through the process right now um, to hire that person. All right. Thank you. I'd just like to say our trainees, though, Mayor, um, have been very successful at utilities. We've had two folks that started out as a trainee that worked their way to their C, B, and A license nice. and have become chiefs. So uh, when we get trainees, we have not lost any trainees since we began the program. That's awesome. That's awesome. Fantastic. So are you going to get new trainee positions anytime soon? So that way then you can start preparing for when the water plant comes online or any other positions? Because I don't see anything in this budget. And I, I, I don't know when the water plant's coming online. I know they just started, I think, construction. I, I'm just asking for future uh, information. So the... Um... We have the operators, we have seven um, in, in the current year and we have seven in the next year. And what we are doing is changing one of those to a chief. So last year, the current year, we have only one chief. Next year, we're changing one of those to, uh, to a chief. Um, so there will essentially be an additional personnel at, at the, in, in the division um, able to go to the other plant. So we'll be able to share those seven operators among both plants and have a chief operator at both plants, which is what is uh, would be required when when the plant becomes ours. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I think that's all. that's actually all I have for. Utilities, does anybody have any follow-up questions? Not for utilities. All righty. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. All right, I think that's it. Mayor, I would like to say that we probably should have done these last two and saved the commission. The yeah, commission it was shorter. The one from yeah. the last one. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we all adjourn, I, I have a few that I need to backtrack to. I do too. So we'll go ahead, if anybody else has any that they need to backtrack while everybody's here to clear up any last minute, maybe overlooks or additional conversations, um, we'll go ahead and have Vice Mayor. Uh, overall type of discussion. Um, we were talking about some reorganization or redevelopment of ground floor. I know with the reorg, there was some discussion of work being done on third floor. Uh, is all of that 
That would be talking about changing of anything in the buildings. Would that come out of building fund? I think most of it, uh, yes, all of it would come out of the building fund. Um, that was the intent. Um, the scope that we developed did not envision the proposed reorg, so we've had to kind of go back and kind of reevaluate the uh, scope for consulting services. And uh, we're still in that process now, uh, and pending so, the outcome of the, of the reorg. Right. Uh, and that's what I was curious about, if there was anything that could be cut through maybe a redesign of reorg that would save us even more on construction or if it was all being taken out of building. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, all of it was taken out of building. Including, so it won't have including any, furniture or anything like that? Uh, I, I, well, at least on the, on the study side, that was our building. I don't think we have any study was going to give us a layout and a concept, then we could have priced it from there, but I don't have any of that data in terms okay. of studies done. The, uh, the, the study, was that something that was paid for out of building fund also, or where did the money for that come from? I'll ask uh, Mr. Miles, NDS director, to address that. Yes, for the record, uh, Frank Miles, uh, director of uh, NDS. The study uh, of the space analysis study uh, was, is anticipated to look at the first floor uh, NDS spaces uh, with a goal towards looking at how we can improve uh, efficiencies, permit flows, one-stop shop. Uh, it, it anticipated first the analysis of where spatial relationships should be, and then the remodel would come soon thereafter. All of that uh, would have been antici is anticipated to be paid for by building funds. And that hasn't been done yet? We haven't had somebody to look at that, that yet? That has not then? been. It's okay. still working its but way that through was, our purchasing program. But, but part of that was not. The scope wasn't third floor also, though, was no. it? That was not okay. part of that. In the budget that we're looking at right now, is there anything put in there that draws money from this budget for any work being done on third floor? Correct. Nothing. None. I'm, I'm not aware of anything in this budget. I'm not aware that that was part of this budget. Of the budget. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last thing that I have is uh, through today's discussion, I'm coming up with approximately $211,380 being cut from this budget. So, Ms. Lisa, if you could tell me what the millage change would be uh, drawing out $210,000 out of the budget. That just gives an approximate. If that's all general fund money. And and if you could add on to that, like they gave us the dollar amount as okay. well earlier. It was like $6. If mm -hmm. you can give us the millage and the dollar amount. That's what I was going to ask. So. It, was, it was all pretty much uh, salary and uh, like commission expenses. So that, yes, it would be general fund. $210,000 would equate to 0 0.0423. I'm sorry, you Sorry. Excuse me? Couldn't hear you. 0 0.0423 millage. Thank you. That'd be $8.46 for a $200,000 taxable value home. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Hopefully we can add to that 210 because I have one that um, is on page 25 of the HTE. What page? 25 of the HTE. It's approximately $50,000 for proposal 1599, and it's in property maintenance. I cannot find that proposal number to match that description in this budget. So I'm um, 
out of property maintenance. It's your dual. Page 118. I'm on page 25 of the page 118. 118 in the book? budget book. Yep. Holy blazes, I've got written stuff all over that one. How did I? Okay. It's called budget fog. That, that, you know what, I think you might be right. I went back and looked a couple of times. Well, there goes that idea of scratching out 50000 of the budget. <laughs> Maybe it's wishful thinking. Oh, I know why. It's because of that project manager thing. Right. Okay. All righty, so that took care of that one. Um, I just have just a very few more. Um, if you go into the HTE, this is in uh, zoning and property standards. Page. Uh, page 49. So in June, and this is already reduced, so I'm very, very happy. But in June, it showed the personnel expenditures of $630,000. Why did it go down to 562? I don't see where that changed. The 50% of the two arborists that were in code got moved to planning and zoning. This would, I'm sorry, the? The 50% of the two arborists that was in the code's budget got moved to planning and zoning's budget from June to July. So help me understand, why are we taking the arborist out of code enforcement and putting it in planning and zoning? That was part of the reorganization that they were going to be in That's planning That's the reorg. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Which may or may not happen that way once we have, okay. October. It's still in the general fund, so. Correct. I just. It's covered. It. Different bucket. I think it's covered. Yep. But. All right. The Warm Mineral Springs. You've heard me talking about this. <laughs> Finally get to ask the question. Page 93 of the HTE. So we had budget workshop in June. And if you look at the line item, other cultural recreation, Warm Mineral Springs gift shop commissions, June. The year to date was 4,947. So now I look at July and it's the exact same amount, 4,947. You cannot tell me that they haven't sold one thing in Warm Middle Springs gift shop in one whole month. That just seems really peculiar. <laughs> Here comes Miss Sandy. It does look like we just missed a deposit when we printed these out. $484 was deposited since then. Do you only make a deposit once a month? It's probably processing well, batches. Right. Right. I'm sorry. I mean a deposit to the account. It's not necessarily. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the accounting one. Just, so. <laughs> just so you know, there's a difference between accounting. Accounting things happen daily. Budgetary processes may only happen once a week, once a month, quarterly. So that's that's it doesn't mean that we're not uh, accountable and, and 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 making sure the money gets into the bank in a timely process. That's an accounting function, not a budgetary function. Because I, I just. I, I get that. I just found Good. it very peculiar that in a whole, it, it's actually more than a month since the last HTE was printed in this one, mm -hmm. that nothing okay. got added. Okay. I'm assuming if this is from an outside contractor that it could very likely be a monthly accounting entry okay. when it settled, when they settle up with that external vendor. But correct. Sandy, I'm sure that is correct. Uh, and just unaudited numbers, um, <laughs> it looks like we are at about uh, 5400 right now for the gift shop. Okay. 
Well, it was worth the conversation. Thank you very much. I just. Yeah. So that's why there's a couple ones missing. Um, there is the scissor lift that we discussed in June. It's not funded this year. By no means am I suggesting we fund it this year. Um, but we do probably need to look at putting it in for next year because looking at the amount of use that we will be using it for, it, it might be warranted. I, I, I don't know how much it'll change, especially once we have full year numbers for the um, aquatic center. Hopefully, no COVID impact. <laughs> um, we may have to just revisit it next year. So I appreciate the information about the scissor lift. Um, and I, I am really sorry, I did have one more for utilities. I don't know if they need to come down here. I think maybe um, finance might be able to help. And there's a page and it's, it's kind of in the, I put it in the back. I think it was something that we got in our inbox for utilities. And if I give you the number, maybe it, that'll help you find it because it says page 48. If that doesn't align with utilities, it's the proposal detail sheet UT1S as in Sam WT, Southwest Water Treatment Plant. What's the and it's going to be a capital project. It, I'm sorry? That's a capital project. It looks like it's an uh, employee. And it says, if denied, we'll be unable to meet the growing demand out in the West Village's area for potable water. So it looks like a higher date of 7120. So from 7 July, August, September, October, you know, you're looking at a few months for $33,000 for this, this fiscal year. But when you go to next fiscal year, it's over half a million dollars. Okay. Can you give me the project number again? Sure. It's U21, S like Sam, WT. And if it would help, I can show you what it is. Typically, they'll hire the superintendent because who will work hand in hand with the city's engineering firm to make sure that the water plant or the sewer plant is built uh, in such a manner. Uh, kind of, they kind of, that way they'll better understand the, the, how the plant works. Then after the plant's built, or a few months before the plant's built, they'll hire the uh, operator team uh, and get them up to speed so that on day one, when we take over the plant, then you know you got the your chief plant operator or your superintendent on site. You've got your staff and your you know so you hire in advance of that and get them up to speed. So on on day one, when you take over the plant, you know it's seamless and smooth. And, and I, I understand the thought process. I'm just wondering if we'll just say for a quarter, it's $33,000 for a full year, it's what, $130,000? Like but next year's operating expenses over a half a million on this sheet. Yeah, because the whole water plant will now be on the, the water plant that the uh, West Village Improvement District is building okay. with the help of the developer now will be mm -hmm. under our her view and our, our authority and will be responsible for those operational costs. There's a bunch of proposal attached to us. Can someone tell me where that is in the HDE version? Yeah, I, I, I can't. I wish I could help you on that. It's It was a sheet that we received in our inbox that I'm just trying to get a better understanding as to what it is. It was just a loose sheet. If, if that is it. But it sounds I, like it's I, I it. It sounds like you're dealing with personal costs, but, but I'll, I'll defer to the finances. So it's not really part of the budget. It's something we got know. in our email. No, it, 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 it's definitely, I would assume, part of the budget because it says fiscal year 21 <coughs> on it, and it's a proposal detail sheet. But it wasn't in the book, and it wasn't in HTE. I didn't see it in HTE because I don't know what this is. And well, I do see on page 203, it says U21. S T O and it says wastewater oversizing. Is that what it is? No, this is for the water plant. 
Has Ricky left the house? He probably has. <laughs> of course, and I saw it after. Sorry. Aaron them scallops. That's there what he he's is. doing. Yeah, it's that time, too. I've got some friends that are going up to the panhandle. Scallops and blankets. Yeah. Um, in the essence of time, I understand this is the utility um, fund. It doesn't, it, it affects the budget. I don't know if it's going to affect the budget too much, but if you could possibly have staff look into it, sure. and if you need me to make a copy of this sheet, I'll be happy to, so that way then you'll at least know what I'm looking at to get an answer. That'd be great. And then we we'll can you, we'll shoot maybe out, shoot us a memo or something on yeah. it. Or an email. Or an email, whatever. Um, oh, there it is. My last Let's one say. is the building department's buying a drone. Oh, you have your answer? Just looking for the person, the, the um, employees, is page 167. 167 in the budget book? In the HD. <laughs> oh, the GovMax. Yeah. <laughs> 161. 167. Thank you. Rick, Rick's in the building. He's coming back. He'll be here in about two minutes. Okay, well, that answered the question then. I'd still kind of like to know how he goes from 33000 for a quarter to a half a million for the whole next year, but uh, there's a lot more than just the employees. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. The answer was there. Thank you, Rick. You can turn around. Okay. Well, Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Well, this way it'll save the steps. You made me bring some scallops with him. <laughs> Yeah, it was one of the, it was one of we got a whole bunch of loose things and it was like I don't know where this belongs. So in our e in our inbox there was a whole bunch of little loose things that came in every couple of days and it was wow. like, well, what is this for? So all right, thank you. So it's not just personnel. In the future, no. Okay. But somehow it got placed under personnel. Yeah, in the future years. Well, yeah, it hasn't been placed anywhere yet, the 573000 Yeah, that's future years. All right, so just the uh, drone. Um, we need a drone? In yeah, I think we talked about I, that. I thought yeah. we did, but I just yeah. kind of want to double check. Surprise! Hi guys, <laughs> they found it when you were in the hallway. <laughs> Just how many steps was that, Rick? To come back <laughs> so here? sorry. We're taking a consensus up here. Scallops. <laughs> no scallops for you. She gets double. <laughs> I was helping you with your step count, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry about that. Back to the drone. Yes, for the, for the record, Frank Miles, uh, Director of Neighborhood Development Services. Yes, we have uh, requested in the budget um, for a drone uh, the, for the building department. The drone will be utilized for inspection purposes. Uh, some of these larger apartment buildings, larger structures, we're able to fly over and inspect roofs, um, structures on top of these uh, 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 buildings as well as utilizing it for um, inspections of land, for clearance purposes, et cetera. Uh, we also would anticipate be, being able to use the drone for post-disaster uh, assessments should, should we uh, unfortunately be hit by a, a, a large wind event. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we would utilize the, the drone for that. Just want to well. clarify for the record, you will not be using this for code enforcement, lay over people's properties, <laughs> and and inspecting uh, for code violations. That just had to give them that idea, didn't you? No, I was just, listen, somebody's <laughs> going to say that. <laughs> somebody's going to say that. I want to clarify <laughs> what it's being used for. No, we would not uh, use the uh, drone in any illegal fashion. Thank you. <laughs> but it can help if we lose horses again yeah. or <laughs> well, fire department it, 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 needs the, to check out smoke. <laughs> the discussion came about from a, a meeting that I participated in with the police department who are, uh, are actually looking to get grants to secure some drones. So uh, we would become part of that, uh, that effort as well. Mm -hmm. So 
it, it won't hurt. We have our own uh, drone Air Force. Drone Patrol. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't have any questions on budget. Um, and I'm sure each of us have closing comments. So I will start. Um, unless anybody has any other follow-up questions. Okay, hearing none. Um, I like this process. I know how hard staff has worked. Um, the new books, I think based on the conversations from the June meeting and this meeting will be um, a little bit more in depth and detailed as far as like personnel, everything all on one page is so much more helpful than having to hunt and peck for for the vehicles and you know cell phone use and, and stuff. It, it, that was very cumbersome for me. Um, I don't know about the others. Um, I'm sure for you guys too, it's just more paper in a very thick book already. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for everybody's efforts, staff's efforts. Um, it, it went very smooth considering everything being new, especially for us. You guys have already been working on it for like six months and getting used to this new program. So I just wanted to say thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, yeah I, would, uh, I would like to say thank you. I think you guys have worked very hard. You guys have done a phenomenal job. I'm going to tell you, uh, budget cycle this year compared to 2016, night and day, <laughs> night and day. Like, this has been phenomenal. It's been a phenomenal process this year. Uh, even last year really wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, you know, we're progressing, right? And so I greatly appreciate you guys and uh, the work you've, you've done to get us here. We're, we're actually looking at a budget more like we should be. In 2016, we were we were way too far out of whack for what the commission should be looking at, and I'm glad that we're that we're at the place now where uh, where we're actually doing it the way it, more in line with the way it should function. And I think everybody can see, I think uh, uh, you know that it flows better this way. It flows better this way. And I do want to say thank you to everybody that's worked so hard to keep this extremely lean, because you guys knew you know it was going to have to be that way. And I think uh, looking at uh, the way this board has, has uh, been, uh, you know, trying to find places, there's just not a whole lot of places to find this year. And I greatly appreciate that because that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. That is exactly what I want the citizens to see, that we are running as tight a ship as we possibly can. And, um, you know, you deal with uh, sometimes a, a difficult board, board and you guys do it quite well. And I thank every one of you for it. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Commissioner Emmerich? Yeah, just like everybody else has said, got to thank staff because this is, this is a hard time for everybody here. And we know that everybody got beat up out there with the numbers and everything. And the process has gotten a lot better. Um, what we're looking at right now is when we came in here, we had already chopped off about $3 million into the budget um, that was proposed. Staff has kept it to a thin line. and. We were actually looking at no increase in the millage rate, but we were looking at up to a 5% in fire. And when those numbers came out, that was at about $12.50 on the year. Through the second process, we're still at no increase in the millage rate. We've ended up chopping $8.46 off of that. So we're actually looking at an increase right now on your average homestead of $200,000 is $4 on the year. That's phenomenal. Those are great numbers. And we still got one more round. It can get better. But that's where we're at right now. So thank you all very much for making that possible. Vice Mayor, thank you. Vice Mayor? Uh, again, thank you to all. Uh, everybody knew going into this that this year was a year that we were going to have to tighten the belt. Um, even before COVID hit, we knew we were going to tighten the belt, but I was assured last year when we went through what we did last year that we were finally at a plateau where we leveled out. Uh, Commissioner Hanks mentioned 2016. Well, 2016 is when they came in to look at 2017. I went back and looked <coughs> and watched the videos of 2016. There was a decline even put in place there. Uh, that 17 mark was a disaster. I mean, it really, truly was. We even took it under because of something that happened in 
found a little wiggle room in solid waste. We even draw it, drew it down lower. And then we had that increase of all the salaries and the union contracts and stuff. That, that inflated it to at least two and a half million to three million dollars that we added to one side of the budget. Anybody who deals with budgets know if you add it to one side, you've got to add it to the other. And we didn't. I mean, we expected an increase in that next year, and it didn't happen. It stayed flat. Nobody had an increase to their bill whatsoever until last year. Eventually, that $3 million has to be balanced on the other side. And that's what we did last year. I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, we took from the reserves. No, we didn't. That 20% is the reserve that doesn't get touched for those occasions that are emergencies. And even now in COVID, uh, we're handling everything very well. Changing this uh, sustainable uh, fund balance, I think, is the best of having it up to 10%. Uh, I think is far better for us uh, instead of making sure we have that 5% this year. I think we have the ability to decrease that millage, uh, decrease the budget by $210,000 and actually have a millage of 3.8312. I repeat that, 3.8312 I see Kim writing. And it was the amount that Commissioner Emmerich spoke to. Uh, we said we didn't want the millage to be raised anymore. We felt comfortable that it could be balanced with that. But if there was some way we could decrease it, uh, I think we have found some areas that's going to make uh, administration and staff do be a little creative with some of the topics we've discussed. But I think we're able to skim a little bit off of that this year. And that is because of what's going on. Not everybody is in destitute situation out uh, in the community. And as somebody alluded to, it's not just the community, but it's also our staff. Some of our staff spouses don't have jobs or the children are at home and things like that too. So it hits all of us in a different form and fashion. But I believe this shows that this commission does care about the community and we're doing what we can do for the best of the city as a whole, all of us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Carasone, did you want to weigh in or are you still with us? Uh, what could you add to that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to give you an opportunity to. No, I'm good. All right. Um, Acting City Manager, do you have anything for us? I'll just make it real quick. Again, I want to thank finance, budgeting. I want to thank all the departments. I mean, y'all towed the line, uh, even sometimes in a, in a, a little bit of a chaotic uh, situation. But I just want to say thank you. Uh, appreciate you stepping up. Uh, I think uh, y'all you know, submitted a, an excellent budget. And uh, I just want to say you're appreciated. Um, with that, I kind of want to whip out my crystal ball, not that I'm very accurate. Uh, this year, I suspect when we start preparing for the next budget that uh, the economy is going to be a little interesting and things will be a little bit more. While we've been able to toe the line on uh, for solid waste, I, I I do not think we will be able to just uh, do status quo on solid waste uh, assessments in the upcoming, uh, obviously in the upcoming budget, but the one after that. So I just want to kind of give you a heads up. Um, I think solid waste is, is, is running lean as mean as bad as they can and because of the growth, they won't be able to, they won't be able to keep doing that. So I just want to kind of give you a heads up. But again, again, thank you so much for the commission, for your direction, your input, uh, staff, uh, could not drive where we need to go without you telling us where we need to be. So thank you so much for your input and your leadership. Uh, City Clerk, did you want to weigh in on anything? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, City Attorney. No, ma'am. Anybody else? Hearing none. It is 220. 
and we are adjourned. See you at 5.01. Well, it's your second year, too. This is my second year. Exactly. Exactly. That helps a lot under your belt. It helps.